Hey everyone, welcome to my stream tonight. Um, today, uh, kind of changing it up from the narrative we've been kind of carrying the last few weeks. Um, I've been really digging deep into partial hydration and a lot of the really like, how should I put it, like bleeding edge things going on um, around like, I guess you'd call it like multi-page app kind of architectures. And um, we're going to kind of take a break from that for a moment. Um, the last stream we did with Marco um, kind of represents kind of the furthest we've taken that thinking kind of, we started with like React server components and we looked at quick and then we looked at Marco and kind of went through this whole progression. Um, but there's still a lot of details to kind of work out and I'm going to let that kind of settle for a couple of weeks. I recommend anyone who hasn't watched it to watch um, the stream from last week. It didn't quite have as many views as some of the other recent ones, but it's probably the most like, future forward thinking stream that I've done since I've started streaming. But today um, is gonna be a little bit different. Um, yeah, hello everyone, say hi in the chat as you come in. Today, today um, we're kind of going back to the, looking at like the best patterns you have now. Um, you know, uh, we've looked at Remix um, and I, we've looked a little bit at, even at Solid Start, but the one that's been kind of, you know, strangely missing from the conversation has been felt. I haven't actually focused on Svelte once in the last nine months since I'm streaming, which is, which is, which is, um, which is, you know, perhaps unusual. And I thought I would take this opportunity finally to c come in and, you know, take a look at Svelte Kit again. Um, I am somewhat familiar with Svelte Kit in that when I saw, started Solid Start a year ago, I literally looked at Svelte Kit and like reverse engineered it and lifted the whole adapter setup over. So, uh, but. I've been hearing that they've been working on some really cool things and they've really been like adding a lot of features and polish to this whole project. And I, I kind of want to see what's going on here. So we're going to look at that a bit um, while, while we kind of go through the stream. And we're, um, I actually have my, you know, Hacker News example that I always use. I have that in, built in Svelte. I've, and we're going to port it from like an old classic CSR one to uh, Svelte kit in a bit. But um, you know, I think this is really just a good opportunity to kind of talk about Svelte in general. We haven't really covered it. I've, I've showed a few of the compiler things. I've compared and contrasted it previously on my stream uh, where I showed what it, where I did the REPL diving um, stream where I looked at each framework's REPLs and kind of compared making examples in them. But um, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of conversation. And as I said, I'm, I'm not afraid to uh, come in and... Uh, you know, answer any questions or share any opinions. I know this is sometimes considered a little bit of a sensitive area or hard to talk about. And, and there's, there's no history, there's no like hiding the history that um, while um, generally like Rich Harris is a, like a stand up guy and I've gone along really well with him. He's actually one of the first people that I interacted with that, you know, on Twitter that had a huge following and he was really great and kind of, um, you know, in terms of, you know, guiding me through the conversation and kind of getting getting to, you know, be in a civil way. But I, I've definitely had friction with the Svelte community at times, um, just because my opinions are so different. I'm And part of the work I've done at Solid kind of calls a lot of that into question. So like, if you have questions for that, like I, I feel more, you know, feel free to shoot them out here, you know, and, and we can we can talk about that. Um, Rich has done actually a really great job when talking about Solid. Um, he was actually on a builder's, uh, Meetup, and he someone asked him point blank what he thought, and uh, he 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 gave you know the you know a lot of this stuff comes down to DSL's answer, and uh, he mentioned um, you know he made the comment about solid being what's uh, you know maybe React was meant to be, and then he he backpedaled that a bit because then he's like, well that says that I'm not saying that React isn't what React's meant to be, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today as well because that's been, there's been a lot of conversation around that. Do you think Svelte Slots and Sols are different? Oh yeah, 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 very, very different. Um, this is, but I don't think it's a bad thing. This has actually been kind of part of my whole strategy and my approach to the framework space is understanding and acknowledging those differences and kind of exploring what they meant. Um, and we, we, we could probably talk about that uh, uh, definitely a bit. Um, yeah, let, let, let's expand that in a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna instead now that I'm done kind of rambling here for the first couple minutes, do my typical um, this week in JavaScript uh, just to kind of get this started. There's been a lot of stuff, um, a lot of discussion, 
a lot of a lot of stuff this week, and I think it, it all kind of ties in. It's always this week in JavaScript that kind of gives spawns the idea for the stream that I'm going to do. And while this wasn't particularly a felt week, it, it just it felt right. And I'll kind of explain that as we kind of go through the different things. All right. So, yeah, let's let's uh, let's let's kind of just jump right into this week in JavaScript. First big thing is I'm just going to highlight right on the screen. You see that. React 18 is in RC, which I think is a huge deal. Um, regardless if you use React or not, React 18 represents that change that React has been working on forever. Like React 17 was kind of like this uh, migration step, you know, kind of like bookkeeping, making sure things are in the right place. React 18 is the culmination of the baseline of what React's been trying to do since like 2016. It's like six years in the making. Um, it's it's huge. Um, I like the ideas here spawned even before React 16 came out. Like they knew that the whole fiber architecture, this whole thing started, uh, you know, from from that time period. They, they they basically asked the question, what comes next after GraphQL? And even though React 18, when it arrives, doesn't completely answer that question, it's the foundation that makes it all possible. So this is absolutely huge for anyone in JavaScript. I I think. We'll see how it plays out, but this this is this is one of those moments coming here when React 18 is finally released. Um, but the rest of the conversation has gone in two ways, and I kind of decide which way I want to take it first because half the conversations have been about syntax, and half the conversations have been about tooling this past week. And I think I think the tooling one is interesting to say. We'll start with the tooling one. Why not? Okay. So what am I talking about tooling? Well, essentially, um, hey, David. Um, es essentially, there's, there's a couple camps forming right now. And I've mentioned this before. And if some people think it's like the single page app versus the multi page app and all this stuff. No, no, no. There's like a bunch of people who, uh, who uh, essentially, it came in uh, like on the, there's a, basically the, the the people who are who have kind of kind of grown up with this new stage of JavaScript and yes it is associated with single page apps mostly but it's you know compilers build tools and you know all the co um, conveniences of modern DX you know like they've gotten used to and grown into this and then there's kind of like a more old school perspective which is trying been fighting for years to kind of make a comeback of this like no tools and it's it's a funny contrast for me because. I, I think I mentioned this. I took the state of JavaScript uh, survey and they asked how you learn JavaScript. And my answer wasn't on the survey. Um, that is, I learned by using ViewSource. Um, and there's a whole contingent of people who really wish the web to go back to ViewSource. Like DHH is one of them on the Rails side. And while I would love to think that this is purely an altruistic altru perspective, they they also kind of have their own. How should I put it? Like there's there's agendas involved there and technologies. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It is very difficult when you get into threads and stuff. But that's why we we got a moment here at the beginning here before we get into, um, before we get into this to kind of, you know, talk for a moment because, like. I myself do kind of walk that line a bit because I, I my first retweet of this week was I meant Jamie Kyle. You might know him as uh, you know I think the co-creator of Babel. People think because I work on tools that I love to use tools everywhere. No, I avoid them as much as I can. Spend as much time as you can focusing on the things that matter. Do everything else out of the only necessity. And I, I can I can live by this. When I make a small library like a like something that could fit in a single file, I don't want TypeScript. I mean, I'll write the types myself by hand. Like you you just you you just want like the less moving parts for maintenance, the easier and better it is. You just go look. Here's the file. And that was the whole point of his his tweet. It goes on like this is actually kind of like nested down in the tweet line. But this is kind of like where he's saying like tools for certain things, not tools for other, other things. Like I said, he created Babel, so and he was involved in Rome. So obviously, he's very much on the pro tooling side. But when you create some libraries, you don't need that. Like it, it comes down to what fits the purpose. So I just wanted to put this out here because I think this is a good introduction. Uh, no, I'm actually rocking um, Mojito for the second week in a row. I've been really getting into these. Anyways. 
um, let's let's uh, keep moving on here. And the reason this is a big one, right? You, everyone saw this um, TypeScript with no build step. Um, could we have types in JavaScript? You know, and this is interesting. Again, the reason I mentioned this one is because at least this proposal is more or less glorified comments. So I I don't think it actually saves you the build step, but it's it's funny how it's being positioned because yes, in the whole shift left mentality of the world where you know let's catch type errors as soon as possible, like in your IDE, something like this is actually you know could be pretty powerful. But it doesn't it doesn't eliminate the build step, and it's kind of interesting again because we're seeing the no build people come out and champion. It. They're like, okay, well if we have TypeScript, maybe we don't need a bundler. We can use ESM and import maps, and um, you know maybe we don't we don't need, you know, minification or, you know, whatnot. And, you know, it, it just starts a whole bunch of conversations. And, you know, wherever you sit on this whole TypeScript in the browser thing, I, I, I think I think it'll be useful in the same way that I think what Jamie just said was useful. Like when you're just building a library, sometimes you don't need to like bring the whole tool chain in. I, I think, you know, when you have like the, the Rich Harris take on TypeScript where he's already just writing comments anywhere, ways, you know, it's, it's kind of useful. But I don't think it's, I don't think it actually changes that much for like for the mechanically you know people who really leverage these tools you know and you know that's my opinion other people are going to have other opinions you know yeah well i mean es4 was crazy right es4 also almost had a jsx which is another topic on this build thing as i told you there's there's there, there's there's been like a lot of things you know devin was like now do jsx right if you guys don't know devin uh critter parcel um and you know, there's this has come up a few times in the last couple of weeks. I've been very on the not JSX side. I like that it's kind of this universal DSL that anyone can leverage to the purpose. Once you go this direction, you kind of say what JSX is. And my gut is more and more in the future, people are going to make want to make more optimization. Solid's built on optimizing JSX, as, as many of you know. But like Inferno optimized JSX before all it did. Like Inferno, which is a VDOM library, still has a different compiled output. View, I'm pretty sure if they're not doing it already, are 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 working would would go that direction where they'd optimize their JSX. Like it's just, I think it's inevitable growth there. So building the browser is like the last thing I personally want. But it, it brought up an interesting conversation. I just want to put this note in here because this 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 is the kind of comment that'll probably slide by most people. But I just wanted to put this there. Sebastian Macbaje, I, I don't know if I said his name correct. I apologize if I don't. Uh, also known as visionary behind React basically for the last seven years. Um, he he basically made this comment, and this one's more of a personal comment on my side, and maybe solid people could, uh, you know, respect this, you know, people have been using it. For what it's worth, this introspection is heavily deprecated. He's talking about props children, essentially, right? Um, deprecated in React in my mind. He's If you've ever used that pattern in React where you, like, clone the children, like, go clone element on the children, um, basically because they're talking about different patterns for JSX and about traversing the JSX because De Devin was saying that like it's really useful how you know with a standard format we could just traverse it and learn about the nodes helps with accessibility analysis all, all this kind of stuff and and Seb's like you know from my perspective it's already deprecated in React you shouldn't be doing it it blocks essentially all optimizations we could do and it's very rarely used we just need to provide suitable alternatives I think this is really interesting. As it, this is more on my side of things because in Solid, as you know, we don't have React clone node because if you clone the node, you'd be cloning a real DOM node, and that'd be kind of terrible. So, you know, like inefficient. So it's interesting that they're kind of pointing out that this this one place is a place that they they actually don't want people to use. I mean, he admits later on that there isn't a good solution, and and that yeah, or Dan says there are use cases, which is the only reason why it's not actually deprecated. <laughs> but but as essentially. Um, it's an interesting shift, and I know this is a little bit off topic, but I just wanted to bring this in because this is this is kind of obvious, especially when you start thinking about the stuff we talked about with Quick with breaking stuff apart and like any kind of optimization in this pattern. You, you, you don't want to break the abstraction, and this is the one place where React's abstraction completely falls apart. I actually completely hate that pattern. And people, it's, it's something that's a gap in solid, so people always ask about it, but it's interesting that the React team themselves consider it kind of an anti-pattern. Okay, sorry. Back back on topic, right? Um, well, yeah, and and this this is this this is this is one, right? Thomas asks, can you give the strongest version of this argument to avoid tooling? It seems to me that it doesn't get you much unless you can literally remove all tooling, which seems unlikely. Yes, and 
here's the thing. There are cases where you can remove all the tooling, right? Like I think in education, I think in scenarios where you're teaching people, it's really powerful to just be able to throw something in a file. Like I, I did, I learned HTML on the web that way, you know, like notepad plus plus. That's how, that's how I learned things. You know, it wasn't just view source. Then once you viewed the source, you copied and pasted it into a text file and then ta-da website, you know? So I, I think if we can get back to that, you know, I mean, ESM was amazing for that. I remember the first time I had Solid running in the browser. As, as many of you know, Solid doesn't require a compiler. Um, it's actually not. The compiler is just like a syntax sugar for the JSX. It actually runs completely runtime. And uh, the first time I had it running off like one of the like Skypack, like the modern uh, CDN on ESM, like on just a text, like a notepad on my computer, I was like, wow, this takes me back. You know, this shows how old I am. But I was just, it was just like amazing, this kind of feeling. But the problem is, yeah, would I ship a production app like that? Never. Like tree shaking is freaking huge deal. I mean, some people talk about minification and compression, which is the next topic I'm going to bring here. But like it, the Solid's core has concurrent um, concurrent mode, like essentially, and time slicing wrapped into it. You have to. You, the scheduling and stuff is all kind of intertwined and you have so many touch points. But in Solid, if you do not use transition or and use it with suspense and enable scheduling one of our flags. Like basically, if you don't use the features, we can tree shake it away. Solids, people go on Bundlephobia and like, oh, solids 6.5 kilobytes. Uh, I see Preact's four. But like solids actual bundle, if you're using the same features that are in Preact is like three point something. Like essentially like tree shaking is huge. When you start adding it up to like the multitude of libraries that you use in your framework but or in your application. So that's a whole other thing, but let's, but there, there are use cases, you know, you know would, for, for education, I would think you still, yeah, I don't know. If you've ever used Babel standalone in the browser, it's, 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 it's kind of unpleasant or whatever. Like there is something nice about being able to just open a text file. I, I think my problem is I, I can see the need or not the need. I can see the want and I can see, uh, how should I put it? I can see like how it could work out and it wouldn't be that bad and it'd be fine. And, you know, but the, it's, it's kind of only like a, okay, you know, it's not like, yeah, this is the way forward. And the people who are kind of pushing it are really like, this is the way forward. And part of it comes from like this, like, like anti-spa mentality. It's, 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 it is, there's a lines drawn. You find that like web components have somehow aligned with people on like the Rails side and all. It's kind of interesting to see how these, kind of movements in JavaScript are going. Meanwhile, all the single page app people really focus on how they reduce JavaScript and solve the problem a different way. There's like a couple of opinions how we can solve this problem. And I've been covering the last few weeks how we can solve the JavaScript problem using JavaScript. But there's a whole other group that's like, well, let's reduce tooling. Let's like, like let, let's go back to how things were before. I think they're not gonna find what they're looking for there. But the part that really, you know, is more irksome or more thing is just like, how strong try to put this one this 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 is like the, this is peak what i'm talking about does minification matter if contents is gzipped and the answer for that is yes like obviously not as much but yes and and, and the tdldr is not really i have to bring this one up because this is just so ridiculous that you know sometimes things are worth being called out so i'm Here's the thing. This article is fine, and it's from Chris Corey in 2015, and he's just talking about that maybe minification of CSS isn't that big of a deal, and he's kind of right. I don't know if you know, if you look at CSS at all, like, uh, I, if you look at CSS at all, it's a lot of repetition. You can't compress any of the symbols because they're all keywords or values, and all you can do is remove the white space. So he was showing that, you know, 147 kilobyte uh, file becomes 123 when you minify the CSS. But when it gzips, it gets down to 22, which is only two kilobytes more than when you apply both of them together. This is true. And there's nothing wrong with this perspective because CSS, there's so little you can do. But think about the characteristics of JavaScript because Brian's trying to suggest that JavaScript works the same way. And that's ridiculous because in JavaScript, not only can you reduce all the white spaces, but you can sh shorten and mangle uh, like all the names. And 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 if you think about it, it's a lot less repetitive. Compression um, isn't actually as effective on JavaScript as it is on CSS. So like, like basically both factors 
you know, change the math considerably. But I mean, they, they're not going to find a study that supports that, you know, only gzipping is good enough on JavaScript. So, the, you know, he's going to use CSS here. I just wanted, I, I just wanted the, to kind of put this out here. This is just, this is just something I had to call out. Okay, let's, let's, let's keep moving on. There's, there's not much more to say about that one. Um, and I think what I wanted to, 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 yeah, are we, are we, let's continue on with what else has been going on. Let's switch the conversation a bit from tooling. I mean, we could talk a little bit about, about, um, the, the other side of the puzzle. So Matthew Phillips, as many of you know, works on Astro, um, really uh, like insightful thinker of trying to like change change the game. He, he, he's, been, he's been exploring ever since he's like got past the, the islands in Astro, he's like, how can I make the island smaller? And he, he actually started posting what his ideal framework would be and in terms of how to make it smaller. And somebody's like, that sounds like Marco. And as few people usually do. And he's like, oh no, I don't think so. And it's like, no, Marco does actually do this. And we've covered that. And Marco's doing it even better as this, the last stream I did. Very good, do check it out. But he, he introduced a, a new framework that's kind of like on the Alpine petite view side of things. And it's kind of cool. It's it uses CSS selectors um, to essentially, um, I'm not gonna use the word hydrate because hydrate suggests you wrote the HTML, but essentially add JavaScript back to an HTML file. So you can basically render this in any backend. It could be your Go, Rust, whatever, whatever you feel like, PHP, Rails. And then it basically uses CSS selectors to basically add the interactivity. And this just uses React reactivity to do it. It's very similar to Alpine, but in instead, instead of embedding it in the HTML, it's kind of like this separate, uh, it's using selectors essentially. Um, and while this is, you might think it's kind of crazily different. I mean, it works using tag template literals and you can do a lot of dynamic stuff actually. He, he was kind of worried that Sprinkles undersold how powerful it was. And I, I was like, no, 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 no. Like, because Alpine, for example, can compete in the JS framework benchmark. It can do everything. You don't need the HTML to do it. Um, so what he actually did was he actually showed, he shared with me a little example. Uh, let's see if I can find it here where he's doing pure client side rendering with 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 his library cgs only um and uh is it gonna, not gonna load for me now because i'm here no okay i mean it's a silly example you just said hello ryan but he he you, you can basically use the body selector to attach a template which is literally just a template element that he created you know like hello with a span and then notice that there's a class with a name in it and then he uses the name to set the text to ryan really novel approach and it what's cool about it is because you keep it all the html it actually makes it easier to play the two app game i call it right because you're not really messing with the html output i don't know if you've ever done this i've been there before i'm i'm not a huge fan of the two app thing that's why i work so hard on these partial hydration things and completing the single app story because essentially like um you, you start getting like templating languages and template language. Like you have like ERB for rails and then you have like Alpine and they're sitting on top of each other. And it's kind of, it's really funny too, because sometimes stuff like e ERB is kind of dumb. It's like not semantic templating. It's just like insert the space templating where, or JavaScript or whatever. And then you have like the really kind of meaningful semantic thing. And when you layer them on top of each other, it's kind of a mess. And I, I honestly, I never want to go back there again. This keeps them separate though. So this is kind of like an interesting take where you can keep your HTML clean from your Rails or PHP app, yet have that same kind of reactivity. And if you want, you can, you know, do, you know, some stuff. This, this is a bit more like stimulus because I, I, I don't know what type of bindings it has, but, it, you know, you've you got the full power of JavaScript at your disposal. Yeah, 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 a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, he was trying to show a point, but yes, I, I think so, right? Because, I mean, you're right. If you've ever seen Solid's compiled output, it looks exactly like this. Create a template, set the template, and then, like, clone the template. So, yeah, I, I think, I don't think every example is like this. This is a pure client render. You can picture the more base case of the HTML already being there, and then just being like, this selector put this in, this selector this way. So it's still very declarative. Um, it's just keeping, like, a secondary tree, and it's using CSS syntax. What I think is interesting about CSS like syntax is if you can keep the benefits of the parser, like one of the hardest parts about inventing DSLs is all the tooling and tool chains around it. I can back to tooling. And that's why I brought this up now. So if you can preserve um, 
if you can preserve your tooling, you know, by following the same syntax rules and whatnot, it's incredible boon, right? This is why I chose JSX. I mean, I chose JSX to install it for specific reasons because it has certain properties I think are very important. Like the fact that you can make a div element, just an HTML div, like, like this portability where I can just pass it around. I think that's incredibly powerful. Um, but okay, if you're not going to use HTML as your DSL and you're not going to use, um, you know, why, why not use CSS? You know what I mean? Like that's essentially what we're seeing here. So it's, 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 it's interesting. I, I think this needs more exploring, but as I said, um, Matthew's a trendsetter and I think it's really cool what he's been playing with. Okay. Um, that's it on the tooling side, unless anyone wants to talk about that more. But now I want to talk about syntax because that kind of gets us back into this conversation um, um, with Svel, because, you know, like it's all, it's all about syntax as Richard was saying. I was, I was actually, I actually have the recording at the handy. I was actually going to kind of play that for, for if you, if anyone heard it, it's a, it's a short little clip. Let me see if I actually have it on hand, but like, I, I, I think I love how, oh, here it is. Sorry. I love how, um, oh, uh, I, the yes. name is in Japanese, so I'll just say the question. So Stupid they ask, okay. what do you think of Solid? Um, about before, what AST libraries would you recommend playing with? Uh, okay, so Solid um, Solid is, is very cool. Um, Solid is, is kind of like React done right in a way. Um, oof, I, I shouldn't say that because now I'm suggesting that React was done wrong. And that's a... That's a terribly impolite thing to say, but Solid is a really well-designed um, library. If so, a lot of this comes down to stylistic preference, right? And I, I think we're at the point now where, if you prefer the JSXy way of doing things, then Solid is a really great option. If you prefer a more templatey approach that combines styles with your markup and your JavaScript, then Svelte is a really good approach. Um, and, and it's it's really good to have those choices. And the people who are using Solid at the moment seem to really love it. I'm not using it for anything, but um, I don't know if people saw the state of JavaScript survey that came out recently. Solid, brand new entrant into, into the survey, um, got the top satisfaction of any front-end framework. Um, Solid and Svelte both got, got 90%. And you really can't argue with um, with numbers like those. Uh, it has a pretty small user base at the moment. It's like a very early adopter-ish brew, but those people really, really love it. So I would definitely encourage people to give it a look. Um, it's, it's kind of disproving a lot of the assumptions that we had made about uh, about front-end framework performance. Um, and it's kind of pushing every everyone to do a little bit better. So. Solid is great. Yeah, I mean, Rich is great. He, he brought up the two points about pushing the boundaries and about the, the, the kind of temp It's been coming, coming up again because my, my position that I've had for the longest time is that it isn't just the shortness of Svelte. Like, actually, I have, I have the tweet here. I, I, I was helping Pierre earlier. Um, he, was, he, he wanted to know what relations React hooks had to... Um, Svelte 3 because someone's like, oh yeah, so, you know, Hooks inspired Svelte 3. And I, I pulled up this old thread because he, Rich was trying to add, was thinking, oh, maybe I can add Hooks to Svelte. And then he, he realized that, you know, he could just reduce it down in terms of like syntax. And this is like, you see, there's no dollar sign on this double. It's like very early, but he, this is basically where he had, he came, he first realized the concept of what he was going to do with Svelte 3, their compiler, you know, just compile in the Hooks, right, so to speak. But I think the thing that's not always obvious um, with this thing is hooks don't exactly work like this. You know, I mean, in some ways, um, React and uh, and Svelte are very, very, very similar. But the other, but the the where they're, they're not similar is this is the perception of the execution model, um, where. Um, you know, in those cases, salt does feel more like solid in that um, essentially it's like this reactive model, right? You don't need the dependencies. Um, and if you're, you don't need the dependency in, in React, which I'll show in a minute, but it's still this kind of re run once, 
like the, the world runs once and then you have the expressions that change. That's the kind of, at least the visual they do. In reality, React and Svelte actually rerun your components. Um, but uh, essentially the, the execution model that is shown to you is one in which, um, you know, in Svelte, which it runs once. And this kind of ties into what it's doing here because Tanner, um, React Query and React Location and React Everything really um, uh, essentially was like, well, I, I, I don't want the dependencies arrays in React. So he actually came in and I'm just gonna put this on the screen so you can kind of sync it in. This, this looks a lot like solid if you've seen it. And my point here is it, this is actually still React because if, as I said, if stuff was like solid the component would only run once. In this case, the component is running multiple times and and there are hooks behind it. But what he did is a whole crap load of use refs behind the scenes to basically like keep mutable state behind these hooks. And then there is there is a state setter behind the signal and it is tied to this component. But essentially he's, he, he's by cleverly, um, by cleverly having these uh, these these objects in, in in refs, essentially he's storing the dependencies arrays as refs in the background, but he's not using React's dependency array because React isn't doesn't let you make the dependencies um, dynamic. Instead, he's providing his own invalidation mechanism, essentially giving the array like say one argument and and based on his own heuristics deciding whether it's updated or not. But he's keeping track of his own dependency arrays and, and then basically invalidating it himself, all using refs, so that when you call this count under the signal effect, it is actually doing solid style tracking. And essentially, when you set count again, he knows from the dependencies whether to invalidate the effect or not. So it actually has dynamic dependency tracking, like solid in terms of like, if you had a conditional or something in here, uh, I think he has an example. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the, the final example where he, uh, it's actually worse when I make it big. Maybe I can. Is there a way that I can just blow this up? No, it's not going to. It's not going to let me do that here. Um, this might be too small to see, but maybe there's like open image in a new tab, and then can we blow it up? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's let's look at this for a second. Um, he's actually like, look at this one. Use signal effect if should log console log message. This is a classic example. Um, Michael Jackson actually, when he found out about this behavior in Solid and in these things, he was like, "Oh, this is really kind of smelly." But I actually think this is like a superpower because if you if you don't if you set should log to false and you change the message, this never reruns. That's how dynamic dependencies. Things. It lets you turn things on and off by feature. It's super powerful. Like the, the array, you can picture the array changing length. And he's actually simulated it here. Um, this is just like a prototype that he's working on. Let me see here, some comments. Yeah, I mean, but the, I mean, if you've used solid, it, it, that's, 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 that's basically what this is. Uh, this is a little bit funny. He is uh, observing the these the state, but the problem is the state is, is the component. It's still React, so things do run over and over again. It's not like fine grain reactivity, but it, it has the same API. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. I, I think everyone can acknowledge that a little bit, even even. Uh, our man Adam Rackus, I, I I was surprised by it. He actually tweeted, he's like, "Oh man, if Tanner Lindsay's into solid, I'm going to have to look at it." Um, <laughs> good times, but yeah. So yeah, but the funny thing is, it's not actually a package. This is a hundred like I mean, it is. It could be a package, but it's like a hundred percent done in refs. I've seen the implementation. He shared it with me. I don't know if it's my place to share it on stream. He seemed like he wanted to be guarded. I do have access to it. I've looked at it. Um, it is it is clever. I've never wanted to write that many refs in my life, but in a sense, he's writing the refs so you don't have to, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, yeah, he, he did say that, but I, I do have access to it. I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I, it's, it's, not, it's not my place to, to share his work, but you can, if you want to picture it, it's just like a lot of refs and refs to refs, like it's, 
it's it's kind of crazy but he did this there, there's no like subscription model there's no like like third party it's not like rut solid in or mobx or like even something like jotai like he literally is just using refs using local state this isn't global store this isn't global state he's he, he just wants to solve one problem just like get rid of those freaking dependency arrays and it actually works and he made it dynamic, which is cool. As I said, it, it, it essentially changes the length of the array, even though React doesn't let it. I mean, it takes an expertise in React that a lot of people don't have to do this. But what's really cool about it is he, you know, he, he put this, he, he was up to like 2 a.m. He went to like, me and him were both up. I was playing around the Svelte demo and he was working on this. And it's just like, man, it's got to go to sleep, right? That's like, I'm a little tired tonight. But um, he just kept on adding features because we were talking through it and we're like, okay, well, how do you do this, right? Can, 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 can we do this? Can we do the conditional thing? How, what if you have some props or some static stuff? Like essentially you can still pass the dependency array and have that also work, but essentially it's tracking, you know, but if you have stuff that's like user reducer or something, it can still feed in through the dependency array. So it works both or check this out. This is a lasso thing, make a wrapper. You can take something immutable state in React and use as a signal, and now it's trackable in the same way, right? If divisible over three. He was really loving playing with the conditionals. Once you are used to playing the conditional dependency tracking, even though it has like the gotchas a little bit, because you're like, oh, if I could write something that's like unrelated and cause things to update, it's so powerful in terms of reducing execution, you know, like, like, you know, especially when the work you're saving is expensive. This is not that expensive a work. So like, it's not a big deal, but you can, you can see like, if it isn't divisible by three, well then no, we don't need to, get random or do count. And I enjoy this in solid and I've always enjoyed this in solid, but seeing it in react and seeing the joy that it brings people playing around with this react just makes me like giddy almost. Uh, it is, it is interesting, right? Cause as I said, it, 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 you, you just, as I said, it's just count. It's just like using solid. The only, the only difference is it doesn't benefit from any of the performance gains because this, this, you, this use uh, where this use signal or whatever he's got here is tied to the app component. No matter where you update it, it causes the app component to re-render. It's it's not fine grained. It's not like causing this stuff to re-render. It's literally just React. Um, but he did it without, as I said, introducing a, another subscription system at all. There's there's no like this is even lighter than some of uh, the commander libraries or whatever like that. She's working on. I think it's like less effective. You don't get that like pin, you know, you know, with the Jotai, everyone's like, oh, update. It's like a scale. This is like just React scale. So, like, if you update it, well, everything below it in the tree is updating unless you put memo yourself. So, there's, there's no performance optimization. It's just an API thing. Then you have like Jotai, which goes, okay, we know specifically which components depend on the state. So, if you change the state that you listen to, re render those components. And Preact is actually working on something like this too. I, so I, I don't have the tweet at my fingertips, but they're actually looking at adding a reactive module for Preact that gives you that kind of Jotai MobX type experience. Um, and then Solid's like the third stage where you don't actually even re-render the components. You just update what changes, like super optimized. So this is like, this is like the, the steps to get there. But as I said, we, let's not linger here too much. This is the stream's going to be about uh, Svelte when we get to it. But I wanted to bring this up because I, I think that it's interesting about how important syntax is, right? And as I said, my pro to solid hasn't been about syntax. It's so funny because people are making a big deal about it. Like, um, I don't know if I have the quote here, but I, Rackus has been making a, uh, Adam Rackus has been making a little bit of a, a, a fuss on sort of some of these things, right? Uh, you know, actually, I don't want to pull it up. It doesn't really matter. But he was a, a week ago. He's like, "Oh, Saul looks really nice," or "I should check it out." And the funniest thing is, I wasn't. I, I saw a stream yesterday with uh, who's it, Cassidy uh, Cassidy on Twitter, and she she had a hard time getting into Saul. And I understand. She she looked at the counter example and was like, "Oh." It's like React, I get this, and just went at it. And she didn't go any further in the tutorial. And then it hit like our our one rule, which is like don't destructure. And you know, every variation of it along the way. And the problem is you see something like syntax and it immediately evokes a certain thought or recognition pattern in your brain and kind of causes you to um, you know, go, oh, I know what this is, and make that connection. And uh, for better or for worse. For solid, we ended up like React and we're nothing like React. So 
it's it's very hard for people to make that shift. Whereas if they see viewers felt, they may be like, oh yeah, go okay, this is different. My brain is now thinking in a different way. And you know, what I was getting at is the execution model that run once execution model makes something like felt and solid. Um, on, on at least on the appearance of execution, as I said, solid is a little different, it's a little bit more optimal in terms of how it executes. But when you when you look at like how the model looks to you, it's it's uh, analogous. Like it's it's like it's it's almost line for line in terms of the same primitives to the same things. It's not like React where you have like these other mechanisms like use ref and use callback. Um, but as I said, the syntax feel, you know, adding the dependency rate, this all kind of adds to this layer that I usually I don't really care that much about, um, but people do. And it, it affects you. As I said, when you learn a new tool, it's a familiarity thing. When you, um, when you, you know, try something for the first time, this has probably the biggest influence on you. So when people pick up Svelte and they see let and constant and like, oh, this is just JavaScript. It has that kind of impact. Even if mechanically under the hood, it's doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. And I think, I think that's that, that's the thing I've been coming to this too because I'm not gonna lie I've been a little bit kind of like eh with some there's people in the solid community like you can take Svelte templates basically and compile them to solid um, and you, you can do that and I've been kind of like yeah sure you know what whatever is your cup of tea right one of the cool things about working with primitives is it's really easy to make them do whatever the hell you want um, but. Yeah, and I actually have a whole thread about that. I know, I know this is a Svelte stream, so I don't think it's worth getting into. But um, if you do get a chance, do check this out. I, I kind of reflect on how perceptions change around Solid. And it is about this whole idea of, of you know, people look at it and see different things. Um, and I, I, I guess working on the framework or the mechanical side, is just, this has been the least important piece to me. And, and yeah, I saw a lot of... Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a perfect example. Yes, of course we could, but here's the and we 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 could even have an ES lint rule, you know, and we do. I don't think it's incorrect behavior. I destructure props sometimes. I do destructure. I tell everyone never to destructure, but I I destructure. <laughs> and the reason is the model makes sense and it's perfectly consistent. It's just not what you're used to. We have a, we we have there, there's Babel plugins. It's not part of the main one, but there, we have two different Babel plugins that that undestructure. And when people get come from React, I sometimes say like use this plugin, but it changes. It, it, it to me it changes the meaning of what's happening. And it's it's just hiding stuff. I don't like heavy abstractions. I like being on the the metal. I don't. Solid is almost an abstractionless framework. This is this is what the where the, that philosophy difference kind of comes in. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to do a stream on this at one point when I really talk about what solid is, and tonight is not that stream. But like, we try and keep the abstractions at a minimum, right? And that is kind of the opposite of what Svelte does, and it has different consequences. Um, so, and and there's and there's different reasoning behind it, right? Like, as I said, we 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 can fix at least the easy cases. Um, I just, I mean, there's always a trade-off. Like, okay, how do you know what what a component is, right? In solid, I enjoy the fact that a component is any function essentially, or or uh, uh, you know, some reactivity is any function. You don't need to wrap it. You know, wrapping it has a performance overhead, but in order to get the destructuring to work, you actually have to annotate to know what the components are. And go, does it return JSX? Does that make it a component? Maybe that's not a bad heuristic, but essentially, you you enter this zone when you have that level of flexibility and power that like there's always these kind of trade-offs. And for me, the trade-offs often just aren't worth it. It's like, how hard was it for you not to destructure? Just don't, it's like, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna jump through a bunch of hoops to not even really solve the problem. And then if you pretend that's the abstraction and someone finds the hole, like that's when the earth shatters. And I don't like, I don't like that. I mean, to be fair, they'll probably get really far before they find the hole in the abstraction. And maybe that's good enough, but it's like, I built solid with my mindset and maybe I'm a senior developer or whatever. And that's where I'm coming from, that that's what I value. But I don't, I don't care to, if I, if it means explicitness, I don't mind, you know, typing a few extra characters. I, I like having the control 
reflective of what's actually happening. Unless, like, I, I don't mind having some conveniences, but essentially, like, I, I don't like masking behavior. Yeah, I mean, this 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 was like, and, and this comes from functional programming. To be fair, um, it's very common in functional programming to do a lot of destructuring. And people love it. You know, I'm I'm probably going to be pushed at some point to, you know, kind of make the that part of the standard preset for solid or something. I just think it's kind of, I don't know. I, there there are shortcomings in terms of recognizing these things. I don't like annotating components. I like the freedom. Like if you ever see me talk about solid, you'll see it's like, it, it's like the most raw, powerful thing, and it's like the complete opposite. Like it, it feels like something where like, and, and this seems weird to people, but I feel like if the paradigm in front end completely changes tomorrow, I can still use solid for that because I'm just like, oh, we're doing this now. Let's just switch around. It's like, oh, concurrent round. Sure. Let's just do this. Like the power of the reactivity and the primitives is literally like you just do whatever you feel like. You're just like, oh, okay. Like, oh, this is what we should be doing. Let's do this. Like, like there's no framework, right? I have the DOM expression compiler, but then you just write like a slightly different compiler. Like everything's runtime and it's all mechanical and the core concepts are three primitives, you know? And that's just how I attack these things. And sure, you can build layers on layers and someone else will do that because it'll make their life easier. Someone can build felt right on top of solid, you know, trade some of that power for some ease of use and good, good, good for you, you know? Do that, um, but that's not like not here. I'm a I'm a kind of a control freak. I like having complete power and the complete ability. Like Saul came out of this time period, um, essentially where um, it was the the crazy part of the early 2010 12 where everything was changing and React came up, and I was using stuff like Knockout. So, like you can just see as a continuation of that. You could you know, in some ways. <laughs> You could say that current solid is just kind of imitating React on purpose because it it seems like a good thing to do, not for any other reason. If the next paradigm is something else, well, we could do that too. And, and Vue plays this game a lot. They they that's why they have so many different syntaxes. I just don't care about the syntax game. I care about the mechanical game, like the more architectural game. But Vue has fine green reactivity and has that same potential. That's why Vue is like, oh, we have a, now we have ref sugar. It's basically like Svelte. Because when you have these powerful primitives, you can do whatever you want. The only thing is that Solid's power goes even lower level because we don't have a beat on. So yeah, sorry, this is this is kind of a tangent, but I knew we'd, we'd get here a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry, I, I had this up before, but I missed the key point, which is the familiarity. People see React and they just do it. Yeah, I mean, this came out of that time period, as I said, because th that's what I was doing. I was in a company that was building apps with like backbone. And somehow when I left that company in 2018, 19, we, we did move to React right at the end. I didn't feel for one moment in those six years that we were behind the curve. I thought we were ahead of the curve the whole time in patterns and stuff, hawks, components, all that stuff, just because we could do whatever the hell we wanted with knockout and solid. I just was like, like the knockout had problems, but I, I just was like, these are solvable. I don't know why people like came up with all these like fixed systems. You can just make the thing do what you need it to do. And yeah, it's, it's a different mentality. People, I don't think most people get what solid is just yet. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and leave you that eat that more in other streams, but that's, that's where this is coming from, right? This is this kind of mentality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the, and part of that is like too many variations, too many things. And that's because it's hard to be everything to everyone. And that's not, that's why I don't see that as my responsibility. I want to provide the primitives. I want to provide the building blocks. I, this is why, like, if you're going to provide the building blocks, maybe you don't get into that syntax game. Maybe give them their, you know, thing, you know, let, let people build those experiences. I, I, I just, I, I don't mean to be insensitive to it. I just don't care. Um, it's just, it, it's just, it's just like typing characters. I, like it, what it does and 
the mental model is so much more important to me. Um, so, you know, as I said, you like, here's the thing. Solid has this explicitly, it has this composition model. Svelte's composition model takes you to store. So you kind of level up. You go from let something to like, now it's a store. And if you ever seen a Svelte store, it's basically like one of our signals. It's a little bit more verbose in its style and it's a little less granular the way the subscriptions happen. It's basically like RxJS. But essentially, like, you kind of level up. View kind of levels up. I, I just don't. I, I I just don't feel like leveling up. It's just like not worth having multiple things. Just give me the thing and have it work the best way possible that I can do what I want with it, and then I'm done. But as maybe that's a, like a different kind of developer perspective. That's that's not how you get beginners using your framework and new people. Even that's a bit of a friction. So we're working on it, and I have people who care about this stuff, so that they're working on it. But for me, I just want to make like the best possible things that can uh, that give me the most control over what I can do with it. Anyway, I, I think we're kind of getting off into tangent. We should, we should start talking about Svelte here, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Let's, 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 let's move on a bit. I, I, one thing. Yeah. I mean, I already kind of covered everything here. I was, I was going to mention here, but it doesn't matter. I am not a stranger to Svelte. Um, uh, and I, I just wanted to put that out here, just kind of that I've I've used Svelte on and off for years as like for little sample things. I um I, I write about Svelte. That's why it's specifically interesting that I haven't um, to date done a stream specifically about Svelte. Um, in fact, uh, I was just pulling this up here because in 2021 on Dev2, which is only one of the publications, but I wrote five of the top ten. Uh, posts of the year on Svelte. I, I'm very interested in how it works. I'm very interested in, in the in the kind of mentality behind it. It, it. Svelte was a big influence on Marco Six, in fact. Um, it's funny, it's kind of full circle because uh, Marco influenced Svelte back in the day. And now, uh, you know, being a compiler, Marco was kind of a compiler um, way back even before Svelte was. And now, full circle, Svelte's compilation for Svelte 3 was kind of served as the basis for a Marco 6's compiler. That's how we figured out how to do lexical scopes, um, which end up being the key to resumable hydration. Um, Svelte is very close. They're missing like a few pieces that I think could get them on that path, mainly around composition, but essentially, and compiler analysis, but essentially the basis of what they did um, you know, at a coarse grain level, we kind of took solids fine grain idea and took their kind of mentality around compilation. And that's where Marco 6, the, the last stream goes into it in way more detail, but um, a lot of respect for the work of Svelte and a lot of, I, I've looked into it a lot over time. Um, so I, I am not uh, unfamiliar with, uh, another example, I was the one who updated Svelte 2 to Svelte 3 in the JS framework benchmark. I actually put in a couple other optimizations um, that made it even faster, but I couldn't get buy-in from the Svelte community because it made the it made the implementation look a little bit messier. And I think Svelte has this aesthetic value that's very inherent to it. So it just wasn't very representative. I could do these couple little things and it would have upped the performance a tiny bit, but it just wasn't worth it. And over time, the framework we actually, uh, benchmark we actually now mark um, uh, frameworks that do those tricks anyways like with numbers and stuff. So it's good we didn't. And Svelte kept its true form without kind of hacking the benchmark. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm familiar with benchmarking Svelte. I'm familiar with writing Svelte. Um, you know, this is this gives me, this is why I feel more comfortable talking about this stuff on stream. Um, because, you know, you could tell Rich was being very diplomatic. He was being like, you know, I'm aware of Solid, but I haven't looked into it too much. I don't want to say anything that's, you know, not quite right. I, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Um, I, I've used felt enough um, that I feel that I, I have enough information to, to at least talk to, about it to a certain degree. Okay, so with that, I think we're on to part two. Um, so what are we going to do here? Should we just start talking about felt kit? Right. For uh, for for people who've been living under a rock, um, felt kit um, is. How do I get there best? Yeah, SvelteKit is basically a meta framework for Svelte, built by Svelte. Um, and it's an SSR first framework. It uses adapters as a way to deploy to any number of different um, platforms. And it kind of just has everything you need to make modern apps. 
And Svelte Kit um, has been in development for quite some time. I was following his development in the snowpack days. Um, and then when it, it, it's funny, it was almost coincidental. I didn't expect Svelte Kit to go this way, but Alex on the solid core team was like, Ryan, you have to use Vue 2. This is where everything's at. So I'm like, okay. Let's try and start building on Vue 2. Like a week later, Rich is like, we're moving to Vue 2. And at that, or V2, not Vue 2, V2. Um, and once he moved to V, I was just like, okay. And that's when I really dug into the Svelte Kit for the first time to kind of look at it. Because Solid at the time only had one thing. I built a really nice data fetching nested router. I knew that was going to be the thing. I'd, I'd been working on that for, you know, I, I had prototypes of it for years. And I knew the key to the future was nested routing with data fetching. Um, Right, right from the start. I, my first version of it that was back in 2014. You, you can find a web component version of it. But I, I built that router, and I was like, I need to build the meta framework. Where do I start? Well, I looked at Svelte Kit as that inspiration because you know it seemed to be doing everything right. And um, in this sense, I haven't looked back at it as much recently because um, Remix came out, and Remix, in a sense, is closer to what I was doing because they too landed on the same routing solution. Um, and it's funny how similar our, the Remix and Solid is, even though they were developed completely independently. Um, so um, in any case, I'm, I'm kind of enthusiastic to look back here at, at what's going on. So we can build an app like this, but before we do that, I'm gonna show you the, what I wanna port here. Um, let's see here, because I've, I've made an app and it's a very simple app. And I love using this app because it's simple, but it has a, some of the basic stuff. Uh, where is our app? Uh, VS Code. Let's blow this up and get some more text on here so we can see it. I built this app and it is a Hacker News demo. And I built this with, uh, with Svelte App Router. Um, I, I threw this together um, just this week. And it's Interesting because it's a hash router, so I had to do like a bunch of a few little hoops to get it working the way we want. But generally speaking, um, I have just I, it didn't take me that long. I just took that same solid Hacker News remix, Hacker News Marco Hacker News demo, and just copied it across. You see this use link. This is um, Svelte app router, and yeah, yeah, ex yeah, exactly. We're 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 doing Hacker News again. Um, What's, it's very simple app. There's, you know, you've got some routes, you have a nav bar, you have the router, and then essentially you have three pages. Um, yeah, you just missed my whole philosophical dive into the differences with Solid and Svelte and that whole thing. Now we're, now we're actually getting some real code. We also talked about Tanner's amazing stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it this 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 is f I'm using the same API that I used in all of them. This like weird combination of the Firebase API, and then from there, one thing I couldn't get working with this was parallelized fetching with this with the the router. There didn't seem to be any dynamic resolution other than the ability to, to wrap components. I'm hoping that I can solve this in Svelte Kit, but I, I it's it's basically waiting for the code the separate code split bundle before it fetches the data, which is a big, big no-no in terms of waterfalls, but it's fine. I, I made sure that the, you know, all the markup and stuff is is right. I use await tags in the templates, you know, with some loading indicators. So let's just run this right now and we can see what we're dealing with, right? Um, localhost 8080. Let me give you an idea of what we're building here. It should look familiar. Um, a slightly different color. I, I hope that's felt orange red or whatever it is. But essentially, we've all we've all seen this demo at this point. You can change pages. You can change the category. You can go to here, and you can shrink them and collapse them. This is the this is the why this page can't be completely. Red, but essentially you can do that. And I think there's a user page that really sucks. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there's some loading states, you know, using the away tag, nothing too fancy here, but this is this is just kind of the baseline app that I want to port from. This is just your classic dget template for Svelte. I want to support it to Svelte kit. I haven't actually tried this yet. So, you know, we might hit stuff along the way. As I said, I, I reverse engineered it from a, technical perspective and not for an authoring. This is my first time actually writing an app in Svelte Kit. So 
we're gonna see, we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, so um, let's let's get started. I got like a million IDEs open here, but you know what? It doesn't hurt to open one more, right? Okay, let's 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 get that going. And actually, before we do that, let's just go here and. I guess it's not, not not true. I do have this kit example that I did back in the day, but let's 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 uh, let's make let's just follow the instructions and get this going. Let's go, yeah. Well, not my app, but MP minutes spelt at next, and yeah, this is probably not what you should leave to last minute. I remember I, I, I the React server component demo I did do ahead of time, but it was funny because. If I hadn't, I would have hit it on stream and like it wouldn't have worked. I'm pretty sure this will work though. So let's let's just go there. So let's go, let's call this felt hacker news. What am I call it? Kit. Yes, I want to install that. Svelte demo app skeleton project. Um, let's do demo app. Use TypeScript. Um, I didn't use TypeScript here, so I'm just going to say no. No, add ESLint for code linting. Uh, no. Prettier. Well, this is interesting. I didn't realize. Yeah, we'll, we'll add prettier. Um, playwright. No. Thank you. Okay. So npm install get in it, get out of Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we're gonna open up our new window now and we're gonna get started. Yeah, uh, people know, I mean, uh, TypeScript's fine. Mm, examples, Svelte kit, Svelte Hacker News kit. All right, let's do this, okay. And we chose to do the the um, the demo version because I I actually don't know any of the conventions and that'll just make our life easier. We can gut everything later. Like for example, routes is the convention, but they have a different scheme for naming stuff. Underscore is API routes. It looks like double underscore is layout component. I want to see what dynamic components are, but we can probably look that up in a minute. Let's just run the example, right? NPM, we'll install first. Yeah, I mean, I, I get some of the tooling opt-in. I just, I just what wasn't expecting like prettier as an opt-in. Like, I, I don't. I guess it's just the config. Um, but. All right, so let's just run this npm run dev and it's port 3000. Ooh, they've made this a little bit nicer. So I'll start, I literally copied their, their start page, like I, I copied um, unapologetically, but they've, they, they now have like a nice little graphic thing in home about to do's. Oh, look, there's a little to-do demo in here. Beautiful. Counter, it hydrates, wonderful. Underscore is private files, as I'm not exported routes, but I use while other exported routes. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm gonna double look at that again. Cool, so uh, back to home. Typical counter demo. Yeah, this is all nicely done. I like the gradient background and stuff. Let's uh, look here for a second and see what that means. Yeah, because it's used by the to do's endpoint to make calls. Aha. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the API actually doesn't live here. So this is like how you just co-locate your lib stuff. Yeah, okay, that's that's cool. I had it hoisted out, but 
you know, sure, co-locate where it's used makes sense. Since we have some ideas, sort of like this salt start. Okay, so that's fine. Some head, yeah, so this is to do's. I wonder what use enhances. <laughs> Former set. I, I, there's probably a lot of APIs because these are these are or libform. Is this okay? Okay, yeah. So they they have some. Okay, so this is nothing special. They just they they want it. I bet you they want to show progressive enhanceable forms. Every, it's all the rage these days, right? I mean, it's it's easy to do, but Remix has turned it into a standard now that everyone kind of has got to pay attention to. But it's 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 fun. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And then what else do we have here? Okay, so pre-render. Okay, so there you go. So I, I suspect that this is a behavior setting thing. This is how you handle config. They have two script tags. They have normal spelt script tag, and then they have um, special one. And I guess this dollar sign is how they do prefixes like so essentially, I wonder if any top level folder you can just put a dollar sign in front of and then essentially just shortcut it. It's easier. We, we, we do something similar to install start. Okay, webp, blah, 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 counter, styles, blah, blah, blah. Um, hmm. One thing that I'm, I am going to wonder about is I wonder, okay, maybe I'll just do it like this. I, I, yeah, okay, yeah, this is, I do have global CSS, so I, I do want to get that in here. Um, so that's the pattern for that. And then they have an index, and then you see this, yeah. This is a very Vite. I, I was doing this with Solid, but then I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could just build the whole thing into the JSX? Like, picture, like, the whole thing being the Svelte file. But the, I had to hack, like, crazy around Vite to make that work. Not not crazy, but it was a bit of work where I think this, this just, just plays nicer with what they're doing Hooks.js, what is this? Cookies, I don't know what this is. Cookie parser, huh. Interesting. Yeah, so maybe this is some of the special stuff that we're gonna kind of come into. I mean, I get routes, we're gonna have to look in the conventions here and I, I get what's going on here. I think that's cool. I think though, maybe it's time to move on to Hacker News. Any questions so far? Sorry, I'm just looking in here. Maybe maybe um, you all have some thoughts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the alias for the source. Yeah, I, I love Veed and the plugin system and it's just great. I've been, I've been having so much fun uh, building stuff with it. I mean, it's also kind of like the biggest pile of hacks on hacks when you get underneath and you realize what's going on. Like when stuff doesn't work, you're just like, what? It's, it, it, how is it working? It actually does that. But from the outside perspective, it's just like the nicest thing ever. And I think there is some work going on. They just, that, that was the whole point. They wanted to kind of like make it to be what people wanted to use. And then kind of they're in this process now, I kind of call this like the second stage where they're kind of going back and like cleaning it up under the hood. They kind of went really fast and out there to make it like, make it kind of like have the right API surface the right way. And like, it's so good from the outside perspective that it's just going to get there. There's amazing team working on it and yeah. Hooks is a middleware. Yeah. I, I'm just not clear how it knows to be a middleware. Um, I mean, that's what it does look like, right? Here's your event and then resolve obviously is finishing it. I just, I don't, I don't know if it's a special name thing or because it causes a caused handle in it or it's, it's always fun playing this named export game. Yeah. Cool. All right. So <laughs> no, man, he's a, he's a wizard, man. A mad wizard. Uh, when it comes to putting together stuff on the developer experience side, that like huge props on that. Um, yeah, no, Vite is amazing. Um, let's, let's, yeah. So if it's just some hooks that I don't care about, I'm kind of tempted how to best strategically gut it. If I go like this, okay, so static is static stuff. So 
I don't won't need this. No apologies. I, the biggest problem is I don't want to gut too much, right? But I do want to gut a lot. So lib is the pattern that they're using for putting their components in it, and like any random thing. Okay, I can live with that. So let's just let's just start. For, I don't think I need this hook. This is not doing anything relevant here. It's it's yeah okay for our purposes we don't need this hooks okay I don't yeah I'm gonna assume it's just file included um, yeah I could have gone with the skeleton you're right but this also teaches us uh, that's one of the things teach by example right um, I I said no to TypeScript why are you here <laughs> it's fine it's fine uh, okay so I'm gonna leave this and this is clearly just pretty much let's change it to felt hacker news. Okay, done, okay. Okay, and then let's port some stuff across. Um, we have this, okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger. We need, what do we need? Our first, point is we need, let's grab the CSS, global CSS. And that's now global CSS, beautiful, okay. And then HTML is fine. And then we're gonna empty the lib folder. Just delete it. And my gut here is we can just pull, kind of the, we can just pull whatever we want from the lib full from from here over to here, just drop in our components, and then let's drop our API into okay because I I think I think these pieces are just going to stay the same. Um, oh, except for the routing because of the stupid link thing. I think I think routing is going to be a lot nicer. I didn't look at the routing before but the layout component should tell me everything I need, right? Yes, looks like, let's see, where is it? Where's the about, where's the nav? Oh, I, I delete the nav, huh, my luck. Um, <laughs> of course, that's fine. I got ahead of myself, it's fine. Let's look, th that's what docs are for, right? Um, uh, we've, actually, I, I, I already have this open. I have to already have this open. Let's go to the docs. No, actually, screw this. Let's just start by, by, um, by filling out our lay, layout component and then kind of going from there. Cause I'm gathering we're going to have one main layout component that not where the, they have the header, but where we're going to basically connect our nav into. So import is this an import nav from lib nav? Okay. And did I get that wrong? Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then essentially from our other example, which is here, we're just going to okay. Forget about the routing. We're just gonna do this. And how does this, okay, slot, beautiful. So this component's gonna be really easy. It's gonna be nav and it's gonna be slot. Um, and then, so this is the thing with these kind of demos, which also makes them kind of nice. Interesting. It's complaining about not being able to find an adapter. I didn't want to think about adapters so far, but let's. It was working, so I'm going to assume that's fine. Okay. And then, just so that the nav doesn't ruin our day, we're going to get rid of this garbage. And then all these use links, I believe, just go out the window. I'm hoping it's just like this. Okay, now, one. 
Okay, let's let's pretend that a warning doesn't ex exist, and we're just going to run dev and hope that we see the Hacker News title bar. Um, beautiful. Okay, yeah, no, that's that's good. Oh, I went through that drink fast. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, obviously the layout doesn't work because I gutted it, and yeah, I mean, it's fine. We can delete about, we can delete to-dos. We aren't doing anything fancy here to trash. Okay, and that's fine. Okay, so, okay, all good, and then... Let's let's just do a quick uh, look on on routing here because the, the the one thing that Hack News has that's unique and I hit problems with this with Remix is you base basically you want a wild card at the root because slash and the title stuff both lead to it so essentially you want to like it's no you don't just want a slug you want like a wild card route like a not found route um, in Next.js it's dot 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 that right that's what i'm looking for um and i said I'm, I'm just saying that i've never used next.js i've never even looked at next.js but um just hoping that i can see support for wildcard routes like star routes um remix for some reason didn't do it easily either so i'm Hoping otherwise, I mean, there's a really, really easy workaround. We just copy the file twice, but this is this is this is the first thing that we should figure out. And I'm going to blow this up a bit. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is all. Yeah. It's it's basically. I don't, I just want pages, which are now called routes, but it's, this is all I get in terms of docs so far, which, yeah. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm thinking if they supported that, I would see some note here. Um, I mean, we can try it. Let's, let's just let's we don't have the counter i'm not going to worry about pre-rendering we'll we'll come back to that um or head let's just put something like this in get rid of the style tag don't need it and essentially index works right we've uh, let's see if index works okay yeah styles are broken but it works okay and then uh, what's going on? Where it's like there's a okay. I'm gonna restart it. It's like it like thinks the the old routes are there and it didn't it didn't update. Let's yeah yay okay yeah exactly okay. That's not felt fault. I've seen this behavior in Vite. Vite is not great with adding and removing routes um, dynamically. One of those things. Um, okay, so this works. Um, so the question is, does this work? Or is it gonna... A better question, does... Actually, you know what? I don't trust this now. This is the, it's the problem. Take away my trust. Okay. That works. Does this work? No, beautiful. Okay, so it does look, even though they haven't documented it, it looks like they do the same convention, which is beautiful because then in theory, um, the, they're already doing what I did already. So if we copy this and paste that sucker right here, um, obviously we got to do a little bit of reworking because there is no spelt spa router. And this has moved to 
a more convenient dollar sign lib as has this. But beyond that, oh, right. I need to figure out how we get, we do data fetching and stuff, but that's fine. Let's, the, 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 one thing at a time. Um, our, I'm okay with this doing it this way, but we need to figure out how to get the location or the params or the query string from the router. Because I suspect, yeah, this is, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's good. It lets you add, but it doesn't let you delete. That's 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 where the error is. Okay, so let's let's figure out how we um, get route data in. So how do you use the slug? Is it like an, it's going to be an export let, isn't it? That would be smart. If I was writing Svelte, that's what I would do. I I would expose it through like a prop somehow or something. <sighs> I don't want endpoints. I just want to, in the Svelte file, how do I get the data? Is there like, oh yeah, so they do have rest parameters right here. Why am I not, this should be something, this is probably my fault for deleting the example too soon, but there should be a way to, oh, I guess I didn't show. Okay, export let item. What? Why is it called item? Because Okay, this is their approach to parallelized data fetching. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, they, they, if you name a file with the same name as the route, then essentially they will automatically do the, the data fetching and then, I don't know why it's called item though. That's the, but I don't necessarily need a data loader. Okay. But I'm, I'm gathering, the, uh, uh, they're not saying it directly, but they're saying, I, I, this is like the remix loader thing but I don't actually need it to be only on the server. I think they used to actually, this has changed a little bit. I think they actually used to have like a, like a, a, like a, a script tag approach to this. So I think things have changed a little bit. Right. Cause, okay. Okay. Yes, I see. It's whatever this is named. Okay. And I'm gathering they parallelize this for us. So this is the way to do it, then let's do it. Seemed reasonable to me. Yeah, so let's do this. So essentially we'll have a new file called da -da -da stories dot yes. Is it right? And it's going to do some stuff. This we don't have a database, it's fine. And it gets params right from there. We're, we're gonna see what it passes us in a minute, but let's assume that this whole thing that I'm doing here doesn't belong here essentially this whole fetching data fetching it does it just doesn't belong here i know it's for another api and we could probably just do a client side but um we're we're, we're playing the remix game right so 
uh, let's just do that. And we'll, I'm gathering this is going to get rid of the need for these awaits and stuff. So we're we're gonna we're gonna see how this works, following the pattern. So fetch it. All right, we can pull this out. This is all right. So and this is a constant we can pull this out to. And we don't need these to be reactive because this function is going to get called every time. So we're returning an object that represents this response. And this, this is where we pull our data. So eventually, what we want to do is we're going to get rid of all of these for a second. Um, hmm. We're actually going to. It's funny. It's fine. It's it's fine. I mean, I, we we're gonna. I'm I'm just gonna do it here. It, it's 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 a little bit funny to do it this way, but essentially we need all this information anyways. So, even though technically speaking, um, you know, it might not be necessary. Uh, yeah, and I'm not gonna worry about this weirdness right now. Uh, I'm just going to await this const stories. And we'll just we'll just send this back like this. Stories. And now we just need to we need to get, get this stuff. And um, technically this is just gonna be params. Probably params are top. And this is going to be, yeah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find out what's. We're just gonna we're gonna comment this out for a second and just make it page one. And we're just we're gonna find out what Svelte gives us here. But if all is right in the world, what should happen is we should essentially in here have an export let and we should have stories export let page export let type and I probably crashed the server at some point. Yeah, or turned it off. Let's do this. Oh, it's because story still has this garbage in it. Um, garbage. Let's get rid of this. I knew when I was working on the, the app router, I'd be removing garbage. All right. I wonder if that's like JSON stringify the response myself or something. Um, well, let's see what we're getting. Well, let's look at the server. Is it any more descriptive? Okay, let's restart the server. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see if we get anywhere here first. Let's just go console.log. We do get here, okay, sweet. That's that's good. So, um, let's 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 take a look at arguments too while we're here. Why not? Oh, I just have an arguments. Beautiful. So we have our request object. Nice URL. Nice, which looks like an actual URL object, and we have um, params, which is nice. Oh, and it's smart enough to to to. Result, yeah, I like that. Sometimes they, like, they, they aren't nice like that. So we can use params. And then all we have to do is essentially take the URL search params 
off the URL object. So we just go params URL and then and it should be, yeah, I mean, actually, this is very much like Remix. I'm just gonna do something really quick here, um, just it's easier. File, new window, file, open recent, Remix Hacker News. This is actually almost identical. So we should be able to just take this to get the page just because I'm lazy. Yeah, sweet. So that still is, that doesn't explain why we're why we're crashing though. Um, so let's just make sure the what we have is what we expect. Stories page type, and we can get rid of this. Okay. Yeah. So I broke something before this. Because this is, yeah, 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 what am I, I'm doing something just wrong here, which is fine. Oh, of course, yeah, I'm just like global fetch, right? But I, you're, 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 you're absolutely right. They, they have a special fetch, don't they? I was thinking like they just like, do node fetch for me, but it's this. This is my problem, isn't it? Okay, so how, how, how and since this is, this is always going to be on the server anyway, so I mean, I, I can literally just get rid of this. Oh, well, I'm going to leave it in case we do some fun stuff later. Um, yeah, what's, what's their deal with data fetching? Do they actually, what's the fetch they provide? Can we search for fetch? fetch. Okay. Is it just like import fetch from, oh, it's part of the, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I see what's going on. Oh, okay, so I actually have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this, which which is fine. Um, I think right because I'm gonna have to essentially in here be like pass fetch to it because I get fetch from fetch. Here. Um, fetch is not a function. Okay. Thought that's I thought I was understanding this correctly because it's like where's fetch coming from? The load function receives the object containing URL params props fetch. Okay. Not, is there a difference between the load function and the get function? That was the load function. Oh, interesting. See, this, this is not what I'm doing right now. This is in the context module in the file. And this is what we actually want. For this particular demo, fetching the client tends to be faster than fetching on the server. Um, okay. But Okay, that was confusing, but that I think this is what we're actually looking for. Yeah, sorry, I, I was ignoring chat for a little bit.
Yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's funny because it's at the beginning, they have this whole thing about pages and stuff, but it's actually down here. Yeah, this, this is what I'm looking for. This It's funny because Remix has these things that I think are like what we're doing right now. But um, it also... Solid's version works more like this, which which Svelte Kit is doing here with this load. So it's it's kind of interesting that there's both. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I, I get I get I get this. It's just it's weird that there's like they kind of occupy the same space. It's just when it runs. Um, but yeah, let's 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 switch it over to this one. Okay, so thank. I think, I think, I think we're, it's funny, we're closer to it before. Okay, so now we want script and we want type equals the module, context module. And then The other changes we make actually all make sense. We just want all of this. And it's defined in a export async function load. Export async function load. Okay, I need to copy the whole thing. We'll, we'll get back to it. All right. And then we want params and uh, what do we want? The other one, fetch. And URL. Okay. And we need this as well. Format document. Prettier? Ooh, spelt. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's get rid of this because it's probably aliasing it in a really bad way. Let's stop this because it's probably. Okay. And status response status props. It calls them props. Okay. It's interesting that it has like different naming conventions. Are we still getting the same token error? Uh, yeah, they provide their own. Yeah, because they do the serialization. It's kind of like resources in solid. They need us. They need to do something special to intercept it to automatically handle the serialization. Solid is just a primitive. You just go like, and then you can use any promise with it. For them, they've decided to single out the fetch parameters. But this, yeah. So let, like, yeah. Let's just let's see. I'm I'm probably doing something wrong in the fetch side, and they're not happy with me. Um, like, did it, some TypeScript fit in here? Let's, let's, let's get here, console.log. Yeah, okay. And we 
have fetch, right? It's not a, it's a real thing. It is an async function. Good. Okay. So then this is interesting. It's still complaining about link not defined. I thought I got rid of that crap. Sorry, just minor annoyance. Okay, just get less errors on my screen. So this, the API fetch is just failing. Hmm. Yeah, I don't get what the. It's the whole editor is not happy with this script type, but it's been since the beginning for some reason. Like since since I started the project, it's been unhappy with with this. And there is an adapter auto, presumably. Let's Svelte JS. Uh, sorry, at Svelte JS adapter auto, like it's here. So. I don't, I, I, the editor complaining is, I think it just uh, red herring. I think, I, I think, I think it's, sorry. is there a reload window? Sorry. Maybe I'll just, let, let me just save any open files and reopen this uh, whole editor again. All right, so, all right. Sure. Uh, we'll do that later, okay. So, okay, at least some red stuff has gone away. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can, yeah, I wonder how we show the loading states now. I'm, I'm not, not going to worry about that for the second. I, I don't. I don't think I need to worry about this. I'm just going to get rid of the await tag here. Yeah, that's prettier. This. Okay, so there we go. Extensions have been modified. This, please reload the window. Okay, and now we're happy. Okay, so. Anyways, npm run dev. Mind you, that that was just the 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 editor. I don't think that explains our unexpected JSON that's happening here. Um, it's funny. I had I forget what I was doing, and I had a similar problem with fetch. It just the only thing is this time we're using the built-in stuff, so it's like what. Don't you like maybe the header format? Um, although, I mean, that seems like a stretch. Uh, yeah, I mean, I use it for all the demos. We were, we were just looking at it uh, a second ago, uh, Hacker News, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. I mean, it looks like just literally that it's failing to parse the JSON here from the response, which is interesting. 
we saw this working on localhost on the other demo like a minute ago. So I, that is tricky. And we need, definitely need to run this on the server. I wonder, OK, let's, I mean, this server. Yeah, is this like a compiler trick and like we're messing with their compiler trick? Do you think that do you think maybe that's what it is? Yeah, let's 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 do that. Um, yeah, we just need to yeah, let's change this to here, get rid of this, and then we have to do a little bit more mapping. Um, we missed the rest of the URL. This is the story URL, so it looks like that. And yeah, let's do that. Point of individual one page, so that'll fetch that. And then it's um, and the the dot JSON. That. Unless we need to set those headers, which I don't think. Let's see. Um, yeah. This thing sometimes rejects if you don't if you don't um, pretend your Chrome on the server, um, it just like doesn't send the data. Um, but just making sure I'm not missing anything else here because it looks like this, then you put the path in, which is we put the path in, and then um, do like that. And it's the same thing. I mean, let, let's let's just, sanity check like maybe maybe you know what there's probably like a simpler solution it's probably like the this isn't getting like formed properly or something like there's like there's like our inputs mismatched and like we're just not creating the right request and i mean this is the most obvious thing and the first thing we should have tried so let's just do that for a second make sure that the url is right yeah undefined beautiful yeah we found a problem Yeah, so why is it undefined? Because it should be top and then it should be. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. This is, beca this is because the other router, uh, like, it maps it to params directly and doesn't use name params. I've never seen that yet. Sorry about that. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm pretty sure this all works. So I'm going to go back to here, make this prams.stories. Um, and then change the API, make sure the API is still there. Beautiful. Okay. Looks good. I don't want to see my console logs. I'm not. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So th that was just. Felt app router is weird and it's it, it doesn't follow conventions and it was kind of unpleasant to use. This, on the other hand, is actually quite nice. Um, so, yeah, this this was just a small little mishap. Okay. So we, we, we now have our loading page. Yay. Okay. And it navigates, and we go to the new page. Done, done, done. Okay, okay, sweet. Okay, um, let this should only take a minute to finish the rest of the functionality. I want to actually play with a couple things here. Um, 
the server loading thing might actually be interesting to look at, but I also want to look at static routes and what that looks like. I think that's kind of interesting. But before we do that, actually, I don't know why I stopped it. Let's just finish the rest of the app because the rest of the app is going to be uh, relatively simple by comparison once we know what the pattern is. This is the most complicated of the bunch. And yeah, it just wires in beautifully, right? You just go, here is my props. Here is this, yeah. And it, this, this, is, this is a nice pattern. Um, and then, oh yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we are missing one thing, loading state. Um, how do we get loading state? Well, yeah, do, 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 do. yeah, 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 props, okay. I want to... Like there's gotta be like there's gotta be like some kind of placeholder thing like while it's loading. Um, sorry, is this a suggestion for an area of the docs I need to look at? Okay. Yeah, uh, but it, 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 it's a, it, my, if, if it works the way I understand, and we, let's, let's actually look at the network and actually confirm this. What it'll do is, and this is actually for you, you people using solid, solid start, this is actually how our route data works, is what it'll do if we can look at just the XHR. When you load the page, you're not going to see anything because it loads it on the server and feeds the data in. But when I go to the next page now, it's going to make a client side request. It, it, the code is isomorphic. It works on both sides. So you could still want a loading state between this navigation, like some kind of pending indicator that, hey, this data for the next page is loading, right? Um, so... So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not if if I, if I don't find it right now, I'm not going to stress on it. Okay, yeah. So that's it, that is a hint. Is navigating. Let's try that. Is nav no navigating. Uh, it's a readable store. Okay, yeah. So it's like it's like the global is pending thing. So essentially, gotcha. Then uh, not here. Here navigating store. So I should be using it with a dollar sign preceding it. So if I'm right, should actually be, I think it's in here. It's like, if I'm navigating and then do all of this, and then And let's grab this one. Right out of here. Okay. And <laughs> forever loading. Okay, I'm not using this right. Navigating. It's always true. 
<laughs> what am I doing wrong? Do I not need to use it like that inside the template? Okay, I don't need to use it that way inside the template, okay. Interesting. Usually with salt stores, you, you put the dollar sign on them, but I guess maybe it's where you use it. I have to submit, I've, I've only really used them mostly like top level to feed into local state and I haven't used them directly in templates before. So, okay, beautiful. So when we load, all right, the not streaming rendering, sorry. Uh, but when we navigate to a new page that we haven't seen before, maybe we can see it. You know what, it probably happens so fast we can't even see the loading state. No, oh, maybe it was all for nothing. Or maybe that just didn't work at all and it's never navigating. Not a big enough deal. I'm just gonna pretend this is the right pattern and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. I'm gonna assume that it's working. Um, so let's just put in the next bit of functionality from our app, which is porting these two over. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, we're back to here again. Now do we want the dollar sign? Yeah, that makes sense, okay. There we go. I had it backwards in the logic, see? There we go. I'm not saying this is a great experience here. This is a terrible UI. Like you'd have better loading states and timers, but it's illustrative, which is the point. So you refresh, you don't see it because it's async rendered, not streamed. But as you move, you can see the loading state. Okay, good enough for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adrian. This is just silliness on my part. I, I, I obviously know the syntax and stuff, but it's easy to get hung up on the details. If you, I, haven't, I haven't done much spell recently. Okay, so sweet. Yeah, so then let's let's uh, continue here. So users, yeah, the, what's what's nice about this little thing here is you can see how I already had the script line in, in I, I, this is one of the, the cool things, right? Is I like this, the reason I like the loader or sort of the data approach over the loader approach sometimes is when you have these apps that you built using CSR and you just want to move them to SvelteKit, you just you just go like this. You just you can almost take your script tag and, that does the data fetch. You might have to break it in half, but you you, you, can, you can almost take do the take your script tag that does the data fetching and uh, and kind of just port it over essentially because we, we should really just copy the same pattern here, right? Export this and then that. This and need well for this one, and then it should be as simple as what const await. Uh, what are we calling this? This is a user. User equals that, and then it should be very similar logic like this. And then if user return user, let's give it a 404, and then add a full script tag that port let user, and then instead of this await, it becomes if navigate if dollar sign navigating thank you automatically imported else don't need this user here and then this becomes a slash if. and if we just did our our work properly here we should have the user page like that yeah easy that's, yeah, okay, sweet. Let's do the last page. It'll only 
take a second here, but yeah, very, very straightforward at this point of what, 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 what how this works. Uh, man, they must be so happy to have a good router now. Really interesting choice to make hash routing your default approach. Um, let's just do this for nicety. It's almost easier to just copy this boilerplate actually rather than port it. It's like exactly the same thing. Um, fetch API, don't need it here. Manage of a user, we're getting a item. Item, do I call it item? No, I call it story. So let's change this to story, 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 and then rid of this, export let, story, and then if Okay, I just made one small mistake here. I have too many script tags. <laughs> That's funny. Still have, is this formatted? Can't even tell. Okay, whatever. Looks good. Oh, bad path on here because I didn't update it to our new dollar sign lib. Let me guess comment has that stupid router. Yes. Sorry. The, the router wasn't that stupid. It's just. I, I knew that this was going to be where I had to do the, the most fun stuff. It, <laughs> oops. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's SolidJS. I missed, I missed uh, porting that properly from Solid. It's pretty clear. Um, class list. Um, yeah, so uh, what is it? Class. It would be like if open I don't even know what this is doing. Let's just not do this. Yeah, this is probably bad accessibility, but the, I didn't make this demo. This is actually, you can blame view. <laughs> this, is a, this is an old view demo that I ported that I've been using over and over again. Beautiful, and then collapsible. Okay, cool. All right, so now we have Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 yes, uh, yes. I have this shorthand and solid as well. Just don't advertise it. It's what classless compiles to under the hood into a namespace class thing. Most people don't know about that. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so I think we have a working Hacker News demo. Um, so the next thing I want to do, um, there's a couple of ways we take this, but what I, I, what I wanted to look at next, there's, there's two places. We can look at some of the features and see what else we can do here. I also kind of want to look on deployment too. Um, I think I want to do deployment first and then, you know, as we go, see what we like, leave the advanced features to last. I want, I want to play the adapters here because that's one of the coolest things about Focus. So Let's see what the docs say about adapters, but let's let's get this demo up on uh, Cloudflare, you know, um, 
you know, that's what I, I like doing. So let's let's do that. Adapter. I know they have a workers adapter because I copied it. Okay, I didn't mean to be that. Okay, actually maybe I will go here. They probably have the instructions right here. I'm gonna use workers for now because it's probably, um, it's probably, it's more, well, I guess I could use either or. It just, it will make it the same as my other demos so that we use workers. Although technically it's a pages app with a workers integration. So I guess it's like kind of the same thing. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Salt config. Yeah, I doubt I'm gonna need this whole thing like that. Problem here. Place this one with this one. And then Adapter, adapter. I don't think we need this. Okay. Don't need charcoal objects. Do I think? They don't mention the Wrangler, Wrangler Tomo. I, I can just copy one over, but they don't mention it. Okay, I'm. Let's let's see how magic this is. But I, I feel like I'm I'm missing something. Okay, npm run build. Okay, complain about something, but I'm gathering it's just the the thing they complained about before. Yeah. This anchor tag not having an href. Okay, so nice. Very nice. Okay, cool. npm run preview. Let's use Wrangler in the background. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's the, it's the same API error we were having before, which is why I thought it was funny. Um, like the JSON thing. Um, but I don't know what it's previewing it on. What is it? So it's, it's a sanity check that we didn't break the universe again. Okay, everything's fine. Okay, so is preview doing, let's look at I guess I won't know because it's gonna. What it, preview is gonna call whatever preview SvelteKit preview does, and the SvelteKit preview is gonna feed it out to the. Um, is gonna feed it into the, the 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 adapter. I've looked at this code before in the past. Some conversation in the chat. What we got here? Copy pages is nice. Yes. Um, it, you're welcome. Uses workers under the hood, yeah. I use the use of Vercel's. Is there any improvement of those? I've noticed that Vercel is like has slight latency over the underlying workers implementation. It's not a big deal, but like my same pages deploy the Cloudflare edge are slightly faster than Vercel edge. I don't know exactly why, but it's like it's minuscule. But I noticed it. Um, but yeah, Vercel's edge is actually literally using Cloudflare workers under the hood. Um, they also have functions which are, aren't using the edge, but like the, the whole new middleware stuff and, and the, the deploy that I did with Solid is on Vercel is literally Cloudflare. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, I can look at what it's doing. <sighs> okay, let's pretend this works. What, what's, what's, what's our instructions for deploying it? Okay. 
Okay, yeah, like, yeah, like, let's, I, I, I've never used pages, but if I go Wrangler dev, it's going to tell me that I don't have a Wrangler file, right? So, Vercel does use AWS Lambda for everything except for their, their like, new edge functions. So no, most people haven't used the new edge functions. They 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 announced them, and I and they and they announced a Next.js demo at the same time. And I just assumed that they were like, oh, server components on the edge doing streaming. But no, they, they Next.js is over here, like most of it. And they they can do some middleware on the edge as they did in a demo, like doing some like routing stuff. And then like like the main Next apps are getting deployed to serverless functions or whatever other infrastructure they have. So. Um, I think Solid was the first to do streaming full app from the edge on Vercel um, with Solid Start. Um, but okay, so okay, let's. I'm just gonna steal my Wrangler Tomo from one of my other apps because it's just gonna be like almost the same thing. Let's just do this, and this doesn't. If this doesn't work, we'll just. Use the other adapter. I don't know anything about pages, unfortunately. But the weirdest thing is, um, like, I don't know if any of these settings are right. Do you know what I mean? Like, because, like, they don't tell you to configure a Wrangler Tomo, but then they say use Wrangler to test it locally. But when you try to use Wrangler to test it locally, it complains. So it's like, okay, please, you know what? They, they, they gave me the instructions. I'm just not following the instructions. This is probably where they went with pages. It just like, Makes, it makes life a little bit easier, right? The, the, exactly. I don't need the Wrangler file if I use pages, which I'm, I'm used to using workers directly. But the thing is, if I, I'm still missing something here because if I try and use Wrangler locally without the Tomo file, it errors at me. So like there's, there's something I have to do, right? Because I do have adapter Cloudflare installed, right? Where is it? Uh, yeah, I didn't grab the workers one. And they did say, oh, to test it, just use Wrangler. <laughs> so I'm like missing something local here. Um, let's see, build, output. Given that all these are around adapter Cloudflare, because I don't, is is adapter work, just because of my familiarity with workers makes is tempting for me to go this way. Yeah, yeah, see, if I go this way, it's just going to work for me. Yeah, I'm very, very tempted. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going workers just because I've done workers like a billion times. So um, let's just do workers, and then I can just grab my Tomo file, and I, I know how everything works. Um, Let's do this. I know workers is like considered a less nice kind of interface and stuff, but um, I am I am pretty used to it at this point. Workers, 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 basic big bucket. Okay, now we just need to know where the config is here. This is the important part. Okay. Let's see where that is. Okay, it's not in build, it's in top level. But where's so they don't use okay it's a different version of the site config but it's the same idea 
<laughs> Beautiful. Angular dev. Interesting. <sighs> Interesting. I wonder if this is like a newer version. It's funny. Huh. Cannot download cargo generate. Fail to download from. That's interesting. I've never had that happen. What, what, uh, we said you had to install an add next of what specifically? I mean, we can, we can go back to the other one. It just, the worker setup is basically just usually the TOML file and you're good to go. But I, I wonder, I wonder why this is, the problem is this stuff's been getting updated pretty rapidly as well. Um, because hmm, I can tell already that the the like the format here is slightly different, right? Because it's a build worker site. You can see like. The, the, this format is different than this format. I wonder if what's happened here is like older versions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all the adapters have to be on next. That's just how they do everything. It's more of, uh, I actually think maybe the worker, like maybe there's a mismatch, like. <sighs> Maybe I'm on an old version of Wrangler. Like I don't, I have Wrangler 1.1.15, right? I mean, I uh, backfire on me completely. You can like update the latest and then now nothing else works except for this, but let's uh, let's do that. Yeah, I have I have one fifteen installed. I don't know if that's the latest. I guess we're going to find out. So one fifteen. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I hit the, the same command again. I didn't mean to. Um. That's weird. Okay, let's try. Let's try it a different way. I was hoping workers would just work because literally I just have it here. Now we get to go through the 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 non CLI way. Um, let's 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 go back to doing the recommended approach of doing this. Let's do pages. Okay. And let's follow the nice instructions to do pages. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I see. Okay, then I'm gonna have to uh, have to actually initialize this. I see. So it's like it's like that. That's that's the missing piece. Uh, 
Okay, so let's let's get this repo up. Hmm. Probably people in. What, what, what do we want to call this? Uh, Svelte Hacker News. Svelte Kit Hacker News. <laughs> I'm like so lazy. It's like, oh, is there? Is there there's, yeah, yeah, this got me getting ignored here. Thank God. Okay. Um, literally, not even going to write my own commit messages. Oh, I have this page. My bad. Cool. Now we have a repo. Now, what are we going to do? Count home, go pages, create a project. Okay. Create a project. Connect to GitHub. Ryan Sullen. Uh, sure. Feel like maybe I should do some of this stuff off screen. So when I show you guys, I don't remember my password. Okay, we're in. It's about hacker news. Begin setup. I need to get solid on this list. Is Remix on here yet? No. Oh, no, it is. Okay, I got some work to do. Okay. Is there anything special on the config side? I'm gathering most of the defaults would be good. Yeah, they don't say anything. Okay, let's get them. They don't, these guys don't. Oh, weird, framework preset none. That's interesting. I wonder if that's out of date. This looks right. I feel like some stuff has moved since then. Environment variables. Let's do node 16. Node version, okay. Node version 16. What, anything else? I don't know what they're talking about, but let's can just continue from here. This looks good. Yeah, that's true. When 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 Luke Edwards uh, works on your team, it's kind of cool, right? Because. <laughs> he works at Cloudflare and he's one of the main contributors to Salt Kit. So, yeah, that's, that's, we're all good.
Yeah, I've been, people have asked me that it's paid just as solid start. I only have uh, workers so far, but, but it seems like it won't be too far a stretch. It's cool because it uses this kind of functions thing, and it's very similar to what Vercel is doing with a new file system API, I imagine. Okay, continue to project. Pages dev. Nice. 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 Okay, okay. This is the fun part. Sorry, uh, I'm not sure. The, we're, 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 this is felt right here. Huh? Um, but this, but yeah, let's let's just see some stuff to understand what we're dealing with. I just, uh, what what do we got? Yes, interesting. So this is bigger than I expected. Is it loading? Do you have to do? Do you have to do something to tell SvelteKit to lazy load the other routes? No, it is lazy loading the other routes. Okay, so that's not it. Okay, so this is just the payload size. I wonder why this is bigger than I was expecting. Huh. I mean, okay. Well, okay, 19.7 kilobytes. I mean, okay, that's not bad. I mean, it's it's it just I, I've been competing with this 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 HN. Uh, Svelte Dev Hacker News, which is not equivalent to my Hacker News demo, but I've been like, I've been like, oh, it's nineteen point five two. What? Okay, fourteen point one. When did Solid get five kilobytes smaller than Svelte? Huh. Oh, I'll take it. Okay, sweet. Um. Okay, let's 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 look at let's look at some stuff here now. So now that we got this, I'm gonna switch to an incognito window because I like I just I, I like looking at loading profiles and stuff. It's it's just it's interesting. Who who do we want to look at? I have every hacker news demo. So uh, Svelte, uh, Solid. Uh, Remix looks a lot like solid. I should get a new React color. Um, HN Marco. Who else? Yeah, so we, we got Svelte, Solid, React, and Marco. Um, yeah, I, I, gotta, I gotta change the solid or the. This is solids blue. I, I need to get the React blue. Then we can have like uh, a nice little. A nice little setup here, yeah. Actually, I'm not too worried about the other ones. I what I what I, I am interested in is that I want to see what the the loading profile is when when we look at this. Um, so let's do a let's do a quick page load and take a look here. Okay. Yeah. So very nice. Five thirty eight. Yeah, blocking render, which pushes the first paint back considerably. Nine forty two. That's not good. Let's let's try that again. I don't think that was accurate. Let's try that again. Okay. Better. There we go. Yeah, 497. This is what I'd kind of expect. We have the page loading, um, blocking async. And if, if we look here and we go to remix, I think we're going to see basically the same characteristic. Yeah, right. We that was a let's give let's give remix another shot. Get salt a second shot. No, that's not good. Let's try remix one more time. We'll, we'll get there. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is kind of thing, right? But 414, first paint coming in at about 527, first paint coming in 497. It's, it's the same kind of thing, right? The biggest challenge here, and then it finishes its longest content full paint around 497, because it all comes in the same time. And our finally page load is at 593 with remix. It's a bit longer. Why is it so long? Hmm, that's a good question. It's probably, I wonder, let's let's look at execution. Ah, why is hydration pushed back so far here? That's weird. Why are these taking so long? That's that is very strange. Okay. Let's let's give remix one more shot. I don't know what's going on there. No. Come on. Okay. No, it's still it's it's the timing of when. Do you know what it is? 
this JavaScript file, the main entry is just so much bigger, right? I think that's what we're seeing here. The, the, the paint, it paints about the same time, but it, over the network, Remix is sending 62.7 kilobytes of JavaScript, where Svelte is sending um, uh, 20 kilobytes or whatever, right? Um, and just while we're at this, let's let's load solid in here too. Um, let's see here, uh, performance, let's just do this. That was not a fast one. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. First paint for solid is at 182 milliseconds. And then it's done at 452. When's this whole finish up? 452. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's because with streaming, it responds right away. Um, well, the other ones are waiting for the data to load. And then we get the first paint, which in this case is nothing. It's just this silly navigation bar with the loading indicator. But then the data loads. And then this the page is still loading, which is what you see in the background. And then the largest contentful paint and stuff comes in at 452. And because everything gets pushed forward like this, and all the resources start loading that much earlier than in here. See how it has to like wait for the whole page or here. So waiting for the whole page, it just means that the whole thing just loads faster. Like every element of it is just faster. I guess we really should see what what we're dealing with. This this is probably this is just not even fair, right? Do Marco first paint? Okay, that was not good. Let's try one more. Get, you got to give them all the warm up run. Apparently, I don't know why the cache is disabled, so it's not like this is leveraging the cache at all. If it, people are thinking that, it's just I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, okay. So what we get? We get first paint here, on the Marco one two eighty seven, and then it's done at four sixteen. So it's even it's even faster than solid uh, four thirty. Yeah. So yeah, it's just kind of interesting. Different characteristics of loading, the difference of what streaming makes. Um, you know. Solid Marco with streaming, React, Remix, and Svelte without. So th this is just kind of basic loading indicator kind of scenarios. I think the thing is, if we just go here and we pretend like we're somewhere slow and we run this again, I think you're going to see all of these are going to perform very similar. Uh, what we got here, first paint at 1284 and largest contentful paint at 1284. And when are we done? I can't see it. Did I interrupt it? Oh, it's because it's like loading stuff. Yeah, so let's say 1284. Let's, let's do fast 3G. What's this one? 1259. Remix. Yeah, I think I'm cutting it off too soon because we don't see the hydration cost. Remix hasn't hydrated by this point. Um, 1218. So Remix has a faster paint for async than the others. And then when when you're under th slower network, but it's the slowest when you're when you're on a fast network. And then Marco 1250. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're all within even on a slow network, they're all within like 30 milliseconds of each other. So it's 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 pretty good. Marco's just hydrated like immediately though because of the side. Let's let's just run this through page and speed insights and then we can kind of move on. Do I have a view three one? Uh, no, I have a view two one because I copied off view two, but uh, I, I, won't, I don't trust the view two one because it's not using any of the optimizations and paralyzed, parallelized data fetching type stuff. Um, so yeah, let's 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 just use a page page speed insights and just give these all a whirl um, and just see. I, I'm I'm interested to see how. How oh, our work goes here. A hundred, unsurprising. And then, yeah, good, good numbers. 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 1, 10 millisecond blocking. Yeah, no, that's nice. Right, uh, I'll grab the remix one too while we're here. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't. Sometimes I don't know what the speed index is. It's confusing. Like there's nothing here that would make you think that this is slow. 
and you can see that it is taking this thing, but these numbers are good. Point nines are where you want to be. Um, and interactive is really fast. I, I think that's really quite good. I, I think solid needs to do a little bit work on our hydration performance, actually. Um, let's do remix here. Remix won't get 100, but um, it, you guys are talking about React tax. Um, yeah, this is, yeah. And the, the, re, in this case, architecturally, Remix and Salt Kit are actually identical. They're both doing async block to render and they're d doing parallelized data fetching and stuff. So I, yeah, this is this is basically just React tax is what you're saying because they're, they're they're being they're on the same infrastructure with the same the same stuff. Um, let's do solid next. Um, as I said, there's different elements of performance for page load performance. Obviously, the MPA that does partial hydration is going to be the winner, which is not solid, which is Marco. But um, yeah, I think our hydration could use some work. Yeah, right, like. The, the spell kit actually um, came out ahead on on this run um, in the past, but you see you see this it, it loaded faster. So I, I don't know how they're determining this thing. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it one more time just because I can, because um, those numbers are actually larger than normal. Um, but yeah, sometimes that's what you get. Yeah, so all one point ones, right? So. Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's run let's run uh, let's run Marco. I think th th there is something I've noticed with PageSpeed Insights, and I'll I'll show you again when we when we get back to here. Um, let's see, because you've seen Solid get point eights for the exact same page previously. See, like this, like Marco's point eight, point eight, point eight. Um, let's let's. I'm just gonna grab this one one more time. And see, let me grab the spelt one again and see how consistent these results are with the others. Because I, I, I ran a couple of the others a couple times. Um, so let's just gonna look here. See, this time it's one point one across the board for spelt. So yeah, I don't know how much. I think I think there's a bit of variety on runs here because we got point nine the first time. Um, yeah. So now now it's all point one point two. So. Let's let's give remix one last shot too, because I think I think the, the the thing is I I what I've witnessed with page speed and uh, page speeds is that occasionally there's like the good run and then like all the rest of them kind of normalize um, at the same numbers. Yeah, Re remix is consistently at one point two though with the extra hydration cost. The other ones, none of the other ones have such a big hydration cost and that's really just React coming into play. Um, I mean, let's run Remix one more time. Oh, see, now we've got 1.1, but again, hydration cost, like 300 milliseconds to hydrate. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can get 100 with, rem with Remix as well. Um, with the other ones, like I don't think we saw any of the other ones not get 100 on, on this demo in any of the trials. I'm kind of like, give me the good run. <laughs> right, give me the good run. Sorry. I lost the stream for a second. Hopefully everyone's still there. Yeah, side note. Um, yeah, we're not getting a good run with solid today. It's fine. It, it, they're, 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 they're most, Marco is ahead of the others because of partial hydration. Remix, Salt Kittens, our Salkin and Solid are very much identical. And then Remix is like a tiny bit slower because of thing. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they all work without hydration. I mean, you just like remove the script tag and it's like, you know. Um, 
it, spell kit was actually I, this is a funny thing it kind of got gets buried but I, I remixed it their beta demo where they've showed the forms off for the first time and they did this like really cool baited reveal and it's one of my favorite things like from a presentation where they were like sitting there and you're doing a remixed app and you're building it and you're like not even paying attention and then they're like oh javascript's been turned off the whole time and uh and uh and you're just like what and it, it was an awesome demo but the the funny thing was Rich Harris gave the same demo four days earlier at a salt conference using Svelte Kit. Um, he didn't like he didn't like he he didn't have the showmanship, um, but he did this. He did basically the same progressive forms demo with the JavaScript turned off. So like the truth of the matter is this is a trick that every JavaScript framework's been able to do pretty much since the beginning of time, um, but people haven't been really focusing on it, you know, a lot of work on like, we want a mobile thing. I'm glad the direction is heading this way and it's important for where things are going in the future. I've talked about this in other streams, but I just wanted to kind of put it out there. Like the the state of the art today in terms of like static routes, well, actually that kind of ties us into the next thing. I want to know how smart static routes are. Um, you know, I'm sorry, did I talk about this yet? Um, Vue 3.2 did have some really good client side improvements. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a funny one because the, the way they did it, see reactivity, I didn't talk about this earlier and I wish I, wish I did because it makes sense more when we're talking about preact, adding reactivity and all that kind of stuff. Reactivity and VDOM are naturally at odds with each other in that the way components break up. Like with a VDOM, you want really, really, really small components as your unit of change, but with reactivity, the smaller the, the the moments of change are, the more over you ha head you have on subscriptions. I know Solid uses a granular approach, but we actually kind of mess with the granularity and actually go less granular for certain things as a way of optimizing creation. So what I'm getting at is Vue has always been a puzzle to me because it's basically both sides of it are fighting with each other. Like it's, it, it, it wants to do these fine grain updates because it's got the, that reactivity, but then it's got a VDOM that's like punishing it for it. And what Vue 3.2 did, which was so clever, was he, like he let you keep the giant components, which are good for reactivity, and then mark DOM or, J, or JSX nodes or template nodes as being static or like memoed as a way of preserving the granularity that the VDOM wants. So it is a weird, it's like an optimization technique kind of similar to Inferno where you're doing these kind of like denoting stuff on the nodes. It's kind of like a pro trick that's really useful, you know, benchmarks and whatnot. But it's really cool that they found a solution for it. And that's the reason why if you go on the JS framework benchmark now, Vue and Svelte are basically the same performance. He 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 just did this little thing and he probably could have done it ages ago, right from the beginning of Vue 3, but now they actually have a way of doing it. And it's it's very clever because it lets them mitigate that the the inherent conflict of having a reactive system feeding into a VDOM. Vue is really the only one that's kind of gone into that level. I think we're going to see some reactive libraries come in, especially with the influence of the stuff we've been doing with Solid, into, into VDOM libraries. And people not realize that adding reactivity to your VDOM library, while it's convenient, actually slows your library down. It's not just like makes it faster. It's actually like it, it can it can make updates more granular, like you know, like Jotai style or whatever, like update only the component you need it to update, but it itself is an overhead. Like if you just did that with React's built-in primitives yourself, then you'd actually have more performance than adding another library to do it. Anyways, sorry, tangent. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I I don't have a view example. I Maybe one day. I, Vue is the one that I, I have the hardest time with. You see me on stream, I get really stuck with Vue. Svelte, I can usually figure it out. Vue kind of takes me back to like, to just not getting it today. Okay. Vue um, kind of takes me back to like uh, the early days of when I was doing web, web dev with like Knockout. And for some reason, like certain parts of the patterns just aren't intuitive for me anymore. I, I just have a hard time. And when I look at the docs, there's so many different ways to do stuff. I get confused um, because it's, it's like tricky that way. But this, this gets me to where I wanted to actually go. Um, I just want to see, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, could it just be, yeah, I don't have context for this anymore. Generally though, it's cool. We all have the same API. The, the, what's cool about this test is all the same app, all the same APIs, 
deployed all in Cloudflare. This is just like a, on the edge. It's all like uniform. Um, anyways, uh, what do we? Okay, cool. So let's let's con let's continue on for a, a minute here. Uh, let's see, we are like over two and a half hours. That's fine. Um, what I want to know about is, you're probably wondering. Actually, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't need it. You're probably wondering how Marco is so fast. And we covered that in previous streams. And that's because this page could be completely static. Um, and it would still work. Because if Marco does this automatically without you, like, the, the biggest difference with, with Marco, and I've talked about this previously, is on a page like this, where there's 75 comments, and you have all this stuff. Marco can ship just the code for the component and not ship the rest of the data and stuff. And you, you have to see it. it. Basically, partial hydration, it like Astro, it's the same kind of concept, it cuts pages down. But what I'm interested in is what? how do static routes work? I know Remix, you just remove the script tag, you literally in the head, and you Solid Start works the same way. But how does it work to do static routes in SvelteKit? Because I want, I want to see if there's like some other stuff that maybe I'm missing um, that we should look at um, is terms of features on, on Svelte Kit. So let's let's go back here. We've, we've got the deployment working. What else do we want to look at? And anyone in, in the chat, go ahead and you know suggest some stuff. The reason I'm interested in static routes is Svelte Kit does something really cool and it, with its router. And um, as I mentioned, Solid has always been on the nested routed Remix stuff even before Remix existed. Like we, we knew we we're on that path. It goes back to Ember days. It's because in reactive libraries that don't have a VDOM, you can't waste your time re-rendering layouts. So you need nesting router. Otherwise, you're it's super unperformant. So I always knew that I was on that path. And then you're just like, well, parallelize the data fetching, obviously, right? But what I'm interested in is Svelte, what it does is it, um, how should I put it? It uh, You're still using the anchor tag as normal in, in React Router, but in Svelte, they actually kind of delegate the event and listen to all the anchors on the page um, at the top. And we actually added this in the latest version of Solid App Router. And what's interesting about that is, in theory, you could have static pages with client-side navigation. Now, I don't know that Svelte is doing this, but I mean, if they had a trick up their sleeve that I didn't know about that would make me very, very impressed, that would be the one. Um, um, we're, we're kind of heading that direction with solid as we're getting to partial hydration and looking at these kind of techniques, but it, and felt has a lot of potential. Um, as I said, it, we used a lot of it for the basis and how we approached compiler Marco six. So Svelte has, while there's some certain limitations in terms of composition, it has the same analyzability, even if they aren't leveraging yet, uh, in the compiler potentially that like something like Marco has. So they, they have a future where they could go towards these other patterns. If, if, they, if they choose to, and I don't think they choose to right now. I think they want to see what it looks like first, but I'm wondering if they're, if, they, if like some of their experimentation is taking them there. Um, so, you know, yeah, I mean, I, what I'm, I'm interested in is, is the, are they called, are they, is this pre-rendering? We saw this earlier. Is, is, is it just pre pre-render true or is like, or like the, the static routes, is it just, oh, sorry, what do you say, hydrate? You can turn off hydration and or routing. Yeah, is, let's see if we can find that. If you're asking about the routing stuff I'm talking about, I, again, that Marco stream, the last one, it has all the secrets of the future of the universe in it. People should watch it um if you get a chance it's a little bit dense but like it is it is incredible um in terms of future technology i'm just wondering if they're playing i got a feeling like maybe they're playing with this stuff and i don't know about it yet so what am i looking for hide you can turn off on hydration and or routing yeah how do i do that that's what i want to do because that first page in hacker news doesn't need to hydrate and i want to know what that experience works looks like in svelte um, I know it can't do partial hydration like Marco does on the second page, which is if you ever saw that demo I did with Remix and Marco, Marco's like beating it by like seconds, like it's just not even close. That's because of partial hydration and streaming. But what I'm wondering is, can we, what, how does it work? Because we have pre-render, but 
I don't know what keyword to look for in the search here. Is it uh, static? No. I thought I thought it was static routes for a second. Um, hydration. Okay, yes, these are good terms, but what do I get to do? Export let hydration. Okay. Let's try let's try the turn. Let's try looking for hydration again. Hydration. Page options. Beautiful. See? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's let's give this a shot. This is this is this is this is why I'm here. I'm not if if there's if there's a feature that they have that I that I th they could potentially have that I think is interesting is this because technically speaking some of these pages don't need JavaScript. Although I don't know if me doing the data fetching here messes with that. Let's hope it doesn't. Let's just do this. Hydrate and Rudder are both fault. Oh, they do have it. That The way they're describing it makes me think that it's exactly what I think it is, which is very, very exciting because um, I haven't added this to Solid Start, but Solid Start can do the same thing. And I, I, if this is what I think it is. Okay, let's let's go local host. Uh, no, not that. Very, very fun. Come on. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I'm probably gonna know until we actually do some so okay let's let's first yeah let's get off fast 3g let's go back to no throttling okay let's 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 okay so this is let's confirm this is cl still client side routing beautiful okay i i, I think for us to really see this though we're going to just have to go and should or deploy it or whatever. Let's just let's just do this. Um, and actually the user page um, the user's page is also static. There's no interactivity on this yet. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's do this as well. Turn off Hydration. And actually, before this, I want to I want to double I want to check all elements of it. Before we do this, let's look. I want to look at data serialization patterns um, here because I've mentioned this before. On a page like this, Marco doesn't need to serialize any of the data because it knows. And you know, everyone else, even if, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, but where is it? Yeah, big blob. And let's, where, where is it? Where's our data serialization in the head? Where is our data serialization for remake, for Svelte? Don't see header, no. Let's look at network. Cause they don't refetch it again, presumably, right? So, where is the data serialization? Um, so let's look at the page. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, there it is. It's, I don't know why I didn't see it before. It's this, this 
this thing at the bottom. It's just, why didn't I see this? Does it get absorbed? Yeah, it looks like they, they remove it when they're done with it. Okay, that's fine. I, 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 I found it. This is this is all the data all being serialized in. As I said, Marco doesn't need to, but everyone else does. So if we go like this and turn off hydration for these two pages, but leave routing on, let's do this. This should hopefully deploy a new page. Because I'm not, I'm not. Oh, is it supposed to be in the module script? <laughs> Maybe I, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I got into that a little bit too much. Let's 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 look. Uh, it is in the water script. <sighs> My bad. Let's do this one more time. Move it up. Yeah, that makes more sense because the module script gets hoisted out. Um, more sense, and it's top level. Okay. And then let's do, where is it? Stories. I just saw those nice lined up exports. Off hydration. Try that again. Yeah, no, this is cool. This this is what I hope it is because I, I I want you to understand the difference between this and what Remix does in a minute. Because what Remix does is the same as like uh, removing the router too, which is really quite easy to do, right? You just remove the script tag. This isn't removing the script tag. This is piecewise removing it if it, I think if it does what I think it does, and it actually can do other things too. So I'm 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 hopeful. Yeah, okay, so this one's still um, deploying. Let's give it a second here. Because I'm not gonna lie, this is secretly what I was hoping for. Because this, this, I was looking at this with nested routing and it's a little bit tricky because once you turn off hydration at a certain point in the tree, you kind of got to turn it off for the the rest of the way down. So like you can't do clever stuff with this. And since Svelte Kit doesn't do the nested stuff in the same way, it's almost easier. But I think I think this is still solvable. And I think I think this is if, if, if this works the way that I hope it works, this is actually really, really cool. Well, I mean, yeah. Let's let's see how our de deploy is doing. Site was deployed. Did we get there? Okay. Well, they got rid of the data. They're not, they didn't serialize the extra data. There, there, we, there, there, there's a couple of ways we can know it's not hydrating, but I think, I th think, hmm. 
And I probably make sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't quite as cool as I was hoping, but it's close. Let, let's, let's, let's do the loading profile and, and see what it looks like here. Um, let's get back to no throttling and do, 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 do it again. Let's just, this is. Why is this like way out in here? Okay, let's, let's try this again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's it's not. Uh, let's let's get a good run for first paint, and then yeah, okay. Let's look at the CPU running. I, I should have kept the old um, time. The, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not hydrating here. But the thing is, they didn't eliminate the, the JavaScript packages as far as I can see, which is what I was kind of hoping for. Like, the thing is, once we move here, it needs to be present. Otherwise, like, uh, otherwise this doesn't work, right? Like the, but that initial page technically st stories doesn't need to be here. And I was hoping when we set to hydrate false, it just wouldn't even sh ship this, the, the, the script tag and actually reduce the initial JavaScript payload. Um, what looks, yeah, we should double check that it's actually doing what we think it's doing, but it does look like, um, it, it removed the hydration script which means that it's probably not running the components. Um, we're not going to see like this on page speed optimizer or anything because we're already like 100 for this simple page. But what I believe what they're doing is they're not serializing the data and they're not sh um, they're not running the hydration for that s section, but they're still sending the JavaScript. Yeah, but if you turn off both, um, then it's like remix. It's like kind of like, oh, you remove the script tag. What's way more interesting here is the potential of almost doing like a really dumb version of partial reverse partial hydration. Um, because we need the JavaScript for the router and we need the JavaScript for like the main page, you know. So like in theory, what we could do is render the whole page on the server, send the JavaScript for the router, and not preload or prefetch the JavaScript to load this page. And then when you do that first navigation at that point, load it, right? So not only not serialize the data, but also not send the JavaScript for the static section. If we turn off the router, what's gonna happen is when we click more, the whole page is gonna reload like MPA style, which again, isn't the worst thing. That's what Marco is doing here. Marco is reloading the whole page here. You don't see the flicker because well, um, it's streaming and all this stuff and the loading. There is a loading state. I don't know why we're not seeing it right now, but ignoring that for a second. But essentially, then then we turn into that thing. And sure, like any of these frameworks can do that. It, it, like because it's it's like solid remix felt. They can all just remove the script tag. Um, what's interesting is situations where you can reduce the JavaScript while still having JavaScript and. This, don't get me wrong, this is good. Um, not hydrating and not serializing that data is going to affect your, your. can I show you what it affects? Um, what it affects, let's reload this. Wait a second. Why, I'm bypassing it. Why is it being like this? The page is more than four kilobytes. That's not that's not nice. What is it doing? What I wanted to um, turn off this stupid throttling uh, document. I thought okay, okay. See, solid seven kilobytes for this page. Remix.
I disable cache, sorry, wrong one. Th turn off the 3G. Doc, doc. Yeah, I don't know why Solid's so large right now. We have to see, anyways. Remix 5.8 kilobytes. I, I think something's 5.9. Something is weird going on right here. Oh, right. Streaming's always a little larger. And then, uh, let me go doc. Yeah, this this these numbers aren't in the right range. It should be like a hundred. It shouldn't be like four kilobytes. It should be bigger than that. What? I don't. I don't know. What, anyways, um, what 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 we did when we switched this is we we basically shrunk the the, the payload of the HTML page. Anyways, um, yeah, this is cool though. Um, it, it, this 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 sh it reduces the page size, and it uh, and it reduces the execution cost up front. And it seems like something fairly trivial to to add to any system that that does the, the smart data fetching in the routes. This is this is what I was hoping to see. As I said, there's a difference. You can also turn off the router, but this actually lets you load the router and not load the JavaScript for the page, which is cool because that, I mean, it technically is loading it, but in theory, you, it wouldn't load it. And then when you click on the next thing, at that point, it could load it or, or hover or do preloading or whatever. So uh, yeah, this this is this is, a, this is a cool approach technically. I don't like, we, we, we could go MPA mode, but as I said, to me at least that's very uninteresting because like literally like you can just not, you can just decide not to send the, the script tags or whatever. You can just be like, don't send the script tags. Um, this is slightly smarter than that. So this is like a good stepping stone. Like there's, there's a lot of sites that are like this where like you have a page and there's no JavaScript, just don't run the code. Um, in our case for this demo, Svelte is already so performant, you know, that it's just not making going to make a difference that we're going to measure not doing the hydration you know, for any kind of like page score thing. But in general, this is this is this is a nice hybrid that I don't think is in remix yet. Um so this is really cool. But yeah, we we can we can we can I think we can do a little better here. But like this is what I meant. Once you have you're using the anchor tags, like you can you can basically not have the link components and have the anchor tags delegate at the top. And we, we actually have the same ability with the latest version of the router. Okay, let's look at let's look at the comments for a minute. See what we've got here. Yeah, have I addressed this one? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Jacob from Salt uh, from Remix reached out to me too about getting it in with Solid. They're not quite sure what they want to do in terms of the compiler transforms, but um, yeah, I think you're going to see some some different stuff there. I don't I don't know what the timing is on that because it seems like the core team at first was really welcoming of this, especially because they got some flack, you know, because people are like, "Look, guys, like you're trying to win on performance and like." literally every other library is already kind of doing that so they but i've got the i i other than preact i'm not sure if there's anything immediately on the on the on the roadmap um yeah yeah I, I, we're getting close to beta i'm going to be covering solid start very soon in the stream and my, my intention was actually to uh, do it next week. I think it's either next week or the week after. In the next couple of streams, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into solid start. Um, uh, static routes actually haven't been something that I've been working on yet in terms of optimization. I've mostly been working on the as you've seen the the core page load. Um, mechanisms and like uh been working on like uh, streaming and and making that work and data fetching we have data loaders uh the, the approach that solid start is taking to uh data fetching is like you know see how Svelte has both ways solid start has both ways too but it actually bases it off the original one it's like this you we have isomorphic data fetchers but we have the ability to annotate any function used anywhere with server. And then suddenly it's an, a type safe RPC call. And um, that means you can just 
feed it right into your resources or whatever. So you can, you, you just write your app, like it's a client side app. And then you're just like, Oh yeah, do this on the server. And you can literally do that anywhere in any file. Um, and you, you can do, and we, we have some, I'll, I'll showcase it. We have forms like remix with optimistic updates um, with a, you know, an API and you can, you can put as many of them as you want on a page and stuff like basically we liked the progressive enhancement and like a lot of the stuff that remix was doing. Um, but we didn't, like, sure, the, I, I understand the, the classic web is based off the redirect model and the page and the single, like, resource location. We were like, screw that. Let's just let you just do whatever you want anywhere and just have it work and be progressive enhanceable. So um, I think it's going to be pretty cool when we sh showcase it off uh, soon. Um Yeah, I mean, I've already shown the the perfect demo to kind of debunk that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think they're doing the right thing. This is what I hoped for. I mean, I think there, there's probably a couple more things. Maybe I didn't turn the option off right. Like, let's just triple check. Did I did, like? Maybe I'm saying stuff and it's not working, and this is just wrong, right? But like, I think. Export const hydrate false script context module. Okay. And script context module actually const hydrate false. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm doing this right. Okay. Okay. But, and actually we saw this, right? They, they removed the hydration script. We actually saw it. So I, I think, I think as I said, this is what I was hoping for. So I think it's really cool. And I think, I think this is just all going to kind of, <laughs> uh, no no it's fine we, I, there's always kind of like little frictions and stuff i mean uh, and little things we're we're, we're, we're we're i'm not i'm not too worried with that i i think if anything i've just been kind of vocal you know the position on performance and like how it plays in and um you know you I, we'll probably start chatting again soon when it's the right priority. I think Remix has been really focusing on their core values, getting the conf out and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I know obviously Sol Start is a bit of a competitor. Um, if timing had been different, I'm pretty sure I would have worked really in, we would we would have seen Solid Start or Solid like Remix instead of Solid Start maybe um, if, if they'd open sourced their project like nine months earlier or a year earlier when I started. Because um, it, it, it is so close to the kind of stuff I, I, I want to do. Although I, I have to say, I love the Veed ecosystem and I love that we can leverage it. I think that might actually be the, sometimes I feel like we accidentally fall into like the happy path with solid sometimes like the JSX actually ended up being like a really good thing, even though it was just like what was there. And in this, the other sense, I think Svelte, or sorry, um, beat is so good that even though things might've gone differently, I'm like so happy. That's how, we, where we ended up. Um, <laughs> Oh, the, the JavaScript is running on is is running on on the client um, for all of these projects that I'm talking about today um, for the routing. Um, the be fair, even the future routing I'm talking about is a weird hybrid where the client is still kind of running JavaScript, but the server is fulfilling the rendering of the page. So, um, yeah, I, ideally is. The ideal approach that I've been talking about, and the whole last stream was about that, the second half of it. Again, if you haven't watched it, the last stream is the best stream to watch ever. Just saying that. Um, the, the, the whole approach is, as it's a hybrid. I think the best approach is, okay, it, how should I put this? It, the best way, in general, client rendering, when the stuff is already there, is the faster way to handle stuff even doing like api calls you just go get the api and render it and if you have the javascript already client-side rendering is really fast and i think just going to the api json like there's no benefit there for typical navigation is or gets if you have all the javascript what's interesting is if you live in a world where you don't need the javascript you don't need the complexity and you never will then 
it's not really any more expensive to pass HTML back or hybrid HTML and JSON back when you do those gets. But where the win comes in is when you do like mutations or mutations that cause redirects, then with a kind of more MPA style routing, you don't have to do a bunch of like jump back and forth. Like consider what, post a form when you're on a page for like creating a new post and it takes you back to your list of posts when you're done. In a client-side routed single page app, typical thing, you do the post, then it succeeds and it comes back. And then it goes, okay, now redirect me back to the page where the list is. And you go there. And then at that point, maybe you use the results from there to refresh the, the list but or to add it to the list. But no, that's not what you tend to do. You tend to, then when you get to the new page, now we uh, pull the data for the new list. You can parallelize the fetch at that time, but essentially the mutation causes one trip and then the new page loading causes a second trip to load it. Um, and this is pretty common. With an MPA framework, you post the form and then the response is the new page. And I think that's where this is kind of going, where you're going to see the server, the client still have like a client routing and probably nested in terms of how it uh, interacts, but the, the partials that are new you want rendered on the server. And where it gets really interesting is if you can kind of get to a hybrid format where you can kind of update existing stuff with JSON and new partials with HTML interleaved and somehow do this in a fine-grained sort of way. And that's that's what I want to work on um, in terms of ideal solution and where things are heading. Um, careful there's a real people about um yeah yeah i know i i'm it's it's funny because i i'm generally pretty open to lots of ideas and and working through like uh like different trade-offs and different approaches but i think sometimes i'm i'm really hard on like the no tools side of things and really hard on like the classic mba side because from my perspective it, it it they've been the like the the really the, the thing that, that kind of makes the discussions a little bit harder because on the single page app side, yeah, we, we've done some terrible stuff. I, I'm not, I mean, the, the benefits were great, but we've done some terrible stuff, but it's, there's been a whole other breed of like MPA, JavaScript MPAs and smart partial hydration stuff. It started with Marco, but we've seen other frameworks and like other techniques over the years kind of come up here and they're, they're, they are doing the stuff that they should be, but it's it's like a third group, right? Like the, the classic MPA, no tools, whatever group. Then there's the single page app group. And then there's this group. And somehow, even though this group is basically has been MPA in the past, they never really got the respect of the other MPA people. And the single page people are just like, why are you doing this old technique? It's only now that starting to understand that that's the path forward to actually like unifying everything, but I'm not sure the single page app side or the classic MPA side is ever going to acknowledge it. And I actually, I have more hope in the single page app side than the classic MPA side. So I'm, 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 I sometimes refer to like the rail side as kind of like dinosaurs and stuff. And it's not, it's not fair. It's just, it's just like, it, it's like, they're the stick in the mud that I like that are kind of blocking it. And I get it because I'm suggesting a future that's all JavaScript. And that's really the sticking point. It's not about how much JavaScript's in the browser or optimizing and all the, the stuff. I mean, it's the same reason it's why it's no build. They they just, there's still this like, you know, JavaScript's something different for them. And that's never changing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. But like, like stuff like this, like I showed that I've been showing and stuff like this, like hydrate, it's the start of this kind of change. This is how, this is, there's multiple ways to attack this problem, you know, and there, some might be in WASM and there might be some backend stuff, but this is a real appro approach to, you know, how, where we can go with this stuff. And I've been talking about it at length for, 
for weeks now. I'm going to probably write another article. I mean, every time I get a little bit more clarity here, I wasn't expecting much more clarity, obviously talking about Svelte Kit today, because Svelte Kit is kind of like the forefront and remix and solid started like forefront of like the current single page app things, right? Like, like the, the this is, this is like, this is not what I've been talking about. This is a single page app thing, right? Um, like, um, but it, you can see it's starting on the, on the journey. It, it wants to get there. It's going to be hard for single page apps to make the full transition admittedly, but that's that, I, I do see that middle ground is starting to be kind of obvious, but right now, for the meantime, I think it is important to keep the boundaries so we can, can keep an idea of where things live, like where that old MPA is, where single page app stuff like um, Svelte Kid or Remix or Solid Start is, and then where like Marco and Quick sit. These are three distinct places, but the, the, the you know, the progressive stuff on the single page app side and the Marco Quick stuff are quickly approaching each other, and I want I want to see where it meets. I, I don't know if every single page app framework is going to make that transition. If they're going to get there, or they're just going to stay where they are. But um, those on the MPA side are definitely interested in bridging the gap. So um, I think this is going to be a really interesting time to, to see that. Yeah, yeah, but my 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 point here is the the new technology I've been kind of covering the last few weeks, like on the more MPA stuff, the quick and the Marco side, is not your typical single page app. Even this stuff isn't really classically your typical single page app. I think I think the the PHP people, if it wasn't for the fact that it, they're done, like Marco and Quick are done in JavaScript, would like what those are doing. Like it is an MPA mentality. It isn't the, you don't have the same complexity necessarily. Um, you, you Most of the stuff like conceptually, even though I told you the router is happening in the client, it is conceptually routed on the server, conceptually. And, and I think this could appeal to those people other than the fact that it, I'm telling them to run JavaScript on their server. I mean, after all, today started with me showing something from Matthew Phillips from Astro, where he's like, I don't want, you know, to alienate people who don't want to run JavaScript on the server. And, and that's fine, but it's, it's that's the other approach. It's the two app approach. We've been there. I'm, as I mentioned, I don't really want to go back there. I think there could be potential to do other stuff, right? The two app approach always had this weird double templating thing. And Matthew solved that with a CSS kind of approach. But you, you you still basically have like two views that are going to layer on top of each other. Um, it's fine. CSS is like that in a sense. It's like a second representation. So, so you know, maybe mentally, like you can view like with with a with corset or whatever that that essentially. Um, server and client are like two different views, like two different technologies or whatever, like. You have your you have your CSS file, you have your JavaScript file, you have your HTML file, and you have your corset file. Like maybe maybe that's the mentality, but um, I I think hydration is solvable. I'm going to go as far as saying that the the solution to hydration that we've been challenged. You know, I wrote an article about the challenges. It's 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 right here. Um, honestly, I was. I was talking to Misko. Um, it's funny; it happened the same time this week. I was I was sitting down with um, I, was, I was implementing use effect or effect tags in Marco, and and I, we, we realized that there's some awkwardness with the queuing. Like you, you always have to queue effects because they have to happen after everything else, and we. We didn't. We we are, had already split hydration off from regular rendering, you know. And the only thing that happens at hydration is event listeners effects. And we're like, oh, we don't want a third freaking queue. And then I think it was Dylan. He was like, then let's not. We we don't actually need to attach the event handlers at that point. They're 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 kind of like already there through delegation on the server. And and then we're like, oh yeah. So literally, all hydration is is calling end user effects i.e. code that only runs in the browser if you literally don't have any user effects like don't use the effect tag or use effect with marco 6 there's no hydration none 
and I didn't really make much, I didn't connect the dots when I heard that at first. I, 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 like, we didn't actually say that out loud. I, we were just like, oh yeah, don't do the event thing. But Misko was like, I've decided that Quick doesn't do hydration. We're resumable and we, we, we just do no hydration. And I'm like, holy crap, that's, that's, that's what this is. So yeah, we'll, we'll see this, but essentially approaches like Quick and Marco basically um, in a sense have eliminated the JavaScript execution part of hydration. I think you, I think with partial mechanisms, I need to know what to serialize and not to serialize finishes the puzzle, like, like the whole Marco's analysis or like server components. Like, but if you take resumability and you take the knowledge of what runs on the server and the client in terms of data serialization, you basically have solved hydration. Like we, 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 and I think I, I think with the knowledge that we basically have solved hydration, I'm, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to go other ways. Like I think we can build a single JavaScript app and just not have hydration. I, I don't know if it's a crazy idea. I'm, I'm not articulating it well, but I, I think I, I, to me, it's starting to look like we actually, like, it's not a, just about partial or progressive hydration. It's actually about eliminating hydration altogether. And we're, we're like right on the, the, like the, the edge of accomplishing that. It's like, we know how to do it. We just haven't done the work to finish the, the, the story yet. Um, yeah. I'm curious why you consider routing fundamental rather than thinking of the URL just as one input into function that returns markup. Is it because routes tend to change nearly the whole page? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and especially on the server, this is like the source of truth that everything else is driven off of. What view to show, what data to load. Like it's the most fundamental source of data. So it makes it a very uh, natural place. Like, and, and this comes back to like the fundamentals of the web. Every time that we've had a big paradigm change, it's, it's, it, it's the routing paradigm. That's like, it's the routing that defines that change, right? Like what's the difference between an MPA and a single page app, right? Um, it's, it's mainly the routing. It's the, the routing on the server versus routing on the client. And like, it's basically the, the backbone. It's the, it's the input of, of it. I understand the URL itself. You could like use it different ways, especially from a client side perspective, you can do nothing with it or everything with it. But this is a piece of information that lives like outside of your, like, like it's in the browser, but it's like outside of your, your your uh, like the the world the, the world you live in. It's like your input from the. It's the only actual input. Like on the server, it's the request and and the route essentially. But essentially, this is like this is the input, right? Especially when you consider stateless environments um, where you, you don't have any persistent state. Like it's all driven off the route. So it, it, yeah, from that perspective, it's the complete back the complete back like the backbone of all applic web applications. Yeah, I think this is an interesting one. I don't know. Node has obviously had like some concerns and some security. I don't know. Some people I've talked to think that uh, Deno or Dino might like change the game here. I'm not, I don't know. It, it seems, the only reason I'm saying this, I've seen people more backend-y excited about Deno than people on the front end side. But maybe that's just like the smallest sh slice of the smallest slice. But if 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 if, if there's a path there, maybe maybe that's that'll do it. Like maybe there's just certain parts about JavaScript backends that just do doesn't jive with their thinking. Um, and maybe like we don't get it because I don't know. I've I've been a backend dev or full stack dev. I, I was for years, right? Like I, I, pre single page app, every web developer was. So, I mean, unless you're like just a designer, exactly. And so, you know, I spent years doing websites in you know, C Sharp and some PHP and Rails, definitely. So, like, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, the router is fundamental because the way you're often integrates with the URL, which is the source of the idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this is the difference between state and stateless, right? Don't like don't don't get me wrong. Like there are other sources. Um, 
for sure. Um, and when you're like sitting there on a page, which like for anyone who doesn't know, Theo's apps are like video apps where he, like long session, you're basically on the same page, you know, like it, 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 it makes sense. But yeah, in those kind of things, like your app would basically be a single page anyways. Like even like if you go back to before single page apps, like you pretend we lived in an MPA world, like you you probably would have built your app as a single page anyway, kind of like there would, maybe there's some like setting screen or something. You, you know, it would have been a way worse experience. Don't get me wrong. Like, but as, like you can always house interactive stuff within inside this model, right? It's the routing again that is the key, the key, the key thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big, um, you know, proponent of like Cloudflare and Cloudflare workers, but I want to see what where this goes. This might be this might be the 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 more suitable thing. I mean, I'd love to see. It's hard because Dino is just this platform that kind of goes anywhere, Deno or whatever. And but like workers have like this really good platform. So like I don't I don't know. Like we're gonna have to see how this this plays out. Um, yeah, this is yeah the TypeScript and the error handling is it, like I figure is it Rust the one people are comparing it to Rust or whatever in terms of, like error handling being like really good. I haven't played with it. There's parts of it that just threw me off immediately. Um, but I think maybe this is what it's going to take. Yeah, I, I tried to do this. I, I got stuck. Um, and you're right. I don't have patience for this stuff. So that, that's pretty much sums it up completely. Yeah, the comments are coming in so fast now that I'm like, barely keeping up. Yes, it's usually with eighteen-hour session. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I can see it. I, that's amazing, honestly. The, the the things you can do with the web now. Yeah, no, that's that's so awesome. Yeah, the concern is about JS backends. So yeah, and it, it's because it. Yeah, I don't know. You'd think that they were would like there would be something okay by this. Time. I don't use them enough, and maybe that's why. But like, you'd think. That there was there'd be some kind of I don't know about Nest JS or any of that stuff I've heard bad things or you know I don't know but like you think there'd be like a full fledged JavaScript backend framework it's been like ten years you know built on Node is it that people are just happy enough with like spin up that Express app like I don't know I I, I lived at a startup that we did do that where we just had Node Express did we moved through different architectures eventually getting on serverless but starting on like Node servers I just I never missed the stuff that I had in .NET or, or PHP, but I mean, other people, like that's how their stuff works. So I, I don't know. I, I have to imagine the tools are out there, but I'm used to just like throwing together what I need and just going from that. So like different mentality, different scale, but like eBay, you know, we, we're, we still have Java for like our, on the API side, you know, like on the data side and the business layer, we did move all the web technologies all to node on the back end. And other large companies have as well, um, but you know we still have a big contingent of Java. So yeah, there, there's there's probably real things there that I'm just not you know taking into consideration. Yeah, no, I can. Yeah, like I think there's some really good stuff coming up with Rust and Go, especially. It just right now maybe WebAssembly is going to be the change. And you can always do other parts, certain parts in backend. But right now, I actually think that we're at a precipice, as I was saying, where we can have the full single app experience in JavaScript, um, front end and back end, with solved hydration, optimal JavaScript, amazing user experience. In, in terms of like navigation and stuff. I, I think we're like right on the thing. And I right now, I think JavaScript's on both sides is the only way to achieve that right now. It, it could change, but right now that that we that's where we're at.
Yeah, I don't know. I if you I didn't highlight this with Svelkit, uh, but Remix, Svelkit, and Solid all um, pull their graphs and based on routing. Like by virtue of code splitting on the route, it automatically bundles stuff based on the route. And then we do all our preloading and everything. And we even like in the browser, like when you go, we, we know exactly what the fetch, everything's based on the router um, in these new meta frameworks. I don't know if that's, if that's happening everywhere. I, I have to assume like Next is doing the same thing. Like this whole architecture that we do right now in single page apps is very much based on splitting along routing. It's it, maybe it's kind of handled automatically for you in the background, but essentially the routing is the key to that. <laughs> Sorry, this is funny stuff in the chat. This, yeah, I mean, this is serious, and yeah, I, yeah. What 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 would happen if we brought everyone together? You know. It's interesting, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, here, here. What if the, the what what if you could now move that to the edge? I, that's that's the only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out there. Like single uh, edge function is what, basically what I've been doing with uh, and these guys have been doing with all our starters that's the only little difference and the thing is um cloudflare has like higher limits than like uh aws's edge functions like it's just a better platform so i i think um it's more practical but to be fair there are still limits and i'm not sure all apps would actually fit in in there but yes i've been really digging serverless and I think I think edge is the other thing here, right? If we're moving back to the server and the server is on the edge, I think I think this is all kind of part and parcel. This is why, like, it, it takes a, a kind of perfect storm for this paradigm shift. It wasn't just enough that the JavaScript frameworks have the ability to do this, but having edge, um, you know, being this and like serverless being this kind of vehicle. We've had serverless for a few years, but I think I think stuff is just kind of aligning quite nicely right now. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're gonna be wrapping up soon. We're this is three and a half hours, is longer than I I thought again. But I'm glad we got to see some stuff in Svelte Kit that that uh, you know I was pretty st stoked stoked about. Um, yes, yeah, that's I think they they all do. Um, you know, like that that's that's sort of where you know, where where like the current generation of uh, I, um, isomorphic gaps are. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I, 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 I've wondered about this, right? I, I think, I think, I think there's potential there. Obviously, I haven't learned Rust, and it's been on my list because of stuff like this. I, I think. It, when this happens, it potentially could be a huge game changer. We're going to have to see what the performance is and how that kind of works out. One of the things I think I've, I've pointed out to people before is the gap between optimal JavaScript frameworks and optimal JavaScript is much smaller than the gap between optimal Rust frameworks and optimal Rust WASM. Like, like at this point, like we've optimized the JavaScript side closer to vanilla and the framework side more than it has been on the on like the Rust side. And I'm not sure, uh, but if, if 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 going straight to WASM past JavaScript is like a twenty percent performance improvement across the board, then like. And it doesn't affect load times and stuff like that, like the right trade-offs. Then, yeah, I mean that is where we are. Like maybe that is the next thing, and you should just wait past what I'm talking about and go there. But I feel like from a timing point, we're gonna hit these perfect Java, like not perfect, but like these realized JavaScript isomorphic frameworks, like I'm talking about. In like React Server Components is even kind of part of this story. Next year, sometime. 2023 sometime we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see what that looks like we're you know we'll have marco towards the end of the year quick will kind of finish the pieces it needs you know but let's say 2023 is a year of that i i'm not expecting wasm uh for at least another few years like 2025 at the earliest so we're, yeah i guess i guess we'll have to see
Yeah, I mean, streaming, I don't know. We'll see what happens with data. I, I, I wonder if, I, I, I think we're, I, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think there's also potential to change the way that we distribute our apps. You know, like, I think we're just like the single function, it, you know, at the edge might just not even be the thing. To be fair, this is probably something that matters more scale, like, and like, and by, by scale, I mean complex apps with lots of parts and pieces. So maybe this is just not really a concern and, you know, any kind of serverless is just deploy now and it's easy and you don't really have to worry about those levels of details. I do think solving the data question is going to be a, the big question coming up. Um, obviously I'm a big fan of like, yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan. I've been a big fan of streaming because I think that it makes it feel almost like Jamstack. Like it's like just it, the apps immediately there for, on the edge is like hitting a CDN with the static content. It feels like that. And the dynamic stuff comes in almost like it was client rendered or client grab, but it was from the edge. So it's like a little faster maybe. But, you know, I, I was talking to Guillermo um, from Vercel and he, he, he was like, you know, we're looking at all means of caching stuff. Like he's like, we can even cache stuff at suspense boundaries and like, he was telling me some really cool things and I, I, you know, they kind of got this vision for what they like called the dynamic static or something like that, where, you know, it's like taking I, granular ISR at a sub page level and like kind of wiring that all in as part of these solutions. Like they're, they're thinking some really cool stuff to kind of orchestrate this at a, a wide scale. And I, I, I know they're not the only ones I know people uh, Cloudflare are thinking along these lines too, right? And I'm, I'm sure, you know, Netlify is working on the new edge solution, you know, and I, like, I, this is just the next thing in this infrastructure that's coming out. <laughs> Rescript. It looks like a really sweet language, honestly. I, I just wish it worked for, for us with Solid, but it, it looks cool. I don't know. I, I I think I think I think JavaScript has a sort of staying power. It, when, when do, whatever like TypeScript, you know, it's kind of supplanted it a bit, but it's still kind of JavaScript. I, I after this, we're going to end up with some other kind of language that probably is a, like good on the back end and the front end and does a whole picture. But I said I, I feel like we're still several years from that. Yeah, great comments all around on this chat. Sorry, one of the biggest problems between the spots was taking things out of the URL and hiding in the local state. Lately, we've been figuring that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're just asking for it, essentially. One, it is tricky. I did live in the age of .NET, like post backs and where you had to serialize everything and these, it was this really terrible back and forth. Like the whole isomorphic single app vision predis, predates the single page app or it was there right at the beginning of the Ajax. Like before we saw JavaScript frameworks really take off, you know, and become a thing, people were trying whatever they could to make their server technology not like work in a really interactive way and not dirty your hands. Like .NET circa 2005-ish, 2006, you could write whole apps without writing any JavaScript, like all in C sharp on the back end. And they were doing partial Ajax page swap outs, like kind of like turbo like stuff where you like doing HTML partials and stuff. And it's all JavaScript handled and they're serializing the data automatically back and forth for the communication and all this stuff. But you didn't write a single word of JavaScript. The C sharp generated the JavaScript from like, like the code you wrote in dot net. And, it was the biggest beast of garbage like ever. Like I, I, it just, it was terrible, but, and the complexity was there. So I, I, I am sometimes wary about these solutions. Like I feel like quite often the secret to kind of getting that key new solution, that space that changes things isn't about just solving the problem. You actually have to simplify some aspect of it, make it easier. And sometimes that often comes as a de-opt but it's an acceptable deopt in the new world of things. And I think that that's interesting because like React, React was a deopt. <laughs> like, I, I know it's funny to call it, but they were less like, okay, look, this data binding stuff everyone's doing and all this reactivity, it's way too freaking crazy. It's like bouncing around like ping pong or whatever. 
you know, and, you know, all this imperative jQuery code and all, all this stuff, just big pile of garbage. What we're going to do is just re-render everything. That is a deopt. That is, that, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you just re-render re everything? Like it's like by its very nature, it's going to be worse, but change some element of it. Like it's not re-rendering the DOM, you know, and the simplification that came from that could completely change how we built apps. But it's based in challenging an assumption that we take for took for granted, which was like, no, like we got to get more granular. We got to get better at updating stuff. And they're like, no, screw it. Just re-render everything. That's the kind of mentality it takes to to really change the world. I, I, it often comes with like a step back to, to forwards kind of thing. And don't get me wrong. I hated React for it. I was like, you're, you're wrong. Fine grain updates is how you get the most performance and all this stuff, right? And here we are again, full circle. And we're like, yeah, fine grain updates is how you get the most performance. But like React was right for its time. You know what I mean? Like they were correct. The solutions back there were, were, were not great. Um, they needed work. I think we've improved and we've figured out the, 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 the pro solutions for those problems. But in the meanwhile, a completely different paradigm uh, sprung out and that's where we have it. It's good that these different things exist. Well, good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm hoping this gets people thinking, come back, ask more questions. Let's just keep it rolling, right? Yes, I will. I will do Cloudflare pages. It's just, yeah, I've been so used to workers. It looks like pages is a really nice deployment story. Like, like I just saw in terms of just doing it on GitHub. Um, it probably isn't that much work. Um, so yeah, I will, I will add pages. We're going to be the worst uh, decision made to bring moving off. It was miserable. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, K, K, KB has its uses. I'm not sure if database is it exactly, but I know they're working on stuff. Um, so I, I'm interested to see where that goes. But I, I think there's certain practicality, like, it, in my opinion, it takes years to get solid database. Like, it, that's, that's, that's a field that takes, a, it takes a. It's not like a. It's not like JavaScript frameworks, right? It takes. It takes a long time to establish the right. Like databases are not something you just go into, uh, you know, willy nilly, so to speak. Um, and I, I think it's just going to take some time on that side. Is it here? Sorry, I'm like catching up. I'm like ten minutes behind. Streaming would be slower than already live JS runtime in the browser requesting updated data. Yeah, I mean, streaming is only really a consideration on mostly initial data, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, the, the situation that I was explaining with streaming um, 10 minutes ago when this comment was made was more along the lines of like, uh, uh, how should I put it? It was, it was more along the lines of, um, like when you don't have the data available at that point, you can just s send, you know, page layouts. And it's like the, there's, there's other things that can kind of go out there, but you're right. There's nothing we can do about that latency it's going to take to get to the database. We can just make it feel nicer. Um, but ultimately it doesn't make things any faster. Um, I, yeah. Okay, so back to here. It's back to the routing thing. Clearly, we do code splitting where each route is an entry, but the dev graph doesn't know which modules invoke which routes because we use your answer. Yeah, I am. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm completely f f following here uh, because we we do uh, like I, I use plugins that analyze the the bundle and then look at the route data paths from the code splitting to to see what assets are loaded and stuff. I I think there's tools working here. I'm I'm not sure I'm completely following what, what's 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 being said here, but I just wanted to like. I think routing is given a lot of consideration in terms of how um, bundling and asset handling is. <laughs> we we did talk about this a bit at the beginning. Um, I have to admit, I don't have the biggest comment on this. I think it, I'm not sure this achieves what people want it to achieve or think that it achieves. I think though that on like, like for like the people who are using JS docs already case, like, it's kind of nice but uh, beyond that i don't i don't think this is necessarily what everyone expects it to be but maybe that's okay i maybe i just don't care enough because i'm probably not going to use it anyway so yeah but i did cover this a bit at the beginning of the stream oh, okay i think i've caught up to the end of the comments that was a, that was that, that was a that was a bit of a spiel there um it's good, yeah. No, I, I think I got what I wanted out of Svelte Kit. I I know there's more things to check out, but um, that that was what I mostly wanted. I wanted to see how it's handling the kind of static routes, and I want to see the performance. I want to see what the authoring experience was. I think all the stuff is really good. I was confused a bit at a couple points, you know, around the whole like loaders. I think those are new, or not loaders. Sorry, the what's the term? Yeah, they they have two concepts for data loading on the page, and they, while they're yeah, they seem kind of conflicting. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, I think, uh, I can see why it's just, yeah, I th I think, I think what's happened is the targets moved during the course of developing this and they're just kind of like, oh yeah, we need this too and this. And this has happened on Solid Start as well. I think it just, we just need a little time kind of refine things out. But I, I, th I think Salt Kit's already in a really good place. It was really easy for me to pick up and whatnot. So um, I, I, I think it's, I think, I think, and it looks like they are starting to play with some of the exciting stuff I, I was hoping they were starting to play with. So that is really cool. Um, so what do we got here? Uh, I should try next. Yeah. Um, view for some reason, I have just a hard time with for some reason, um, even though the composition API is like, like my jam, like it's like, it's, the, it's like the same as solid, you know, for some reason, view templates and authoring and everything just feels so awkward. And I, every time I try and go in, I haven't tried to be fair. I haven't tried not next JS either. So I, I missed the, the big ones. Um, I, I was so focused next always was hard for me to get into because I, I, I kind of understood what suspense meant and transitions and all the stuff that react core was doing. So I in solid was kind of doing the same stuff. So I was trying to design a framework that would be built for those technologies and next JS always I looked at it and I was like, oh, this this is like completely in the past. Like you're just not using the right patterns. By the time I got into this, like I got into this game late. I I, I only got into really heavily into SSR and JavaScript in 2019 time period. And you, you next had been established already for three years, but like, yeah, or I guess 2018 time period. But like at that point, I was just like, yeah, next is not the way it is. But they are changing. I just yeah, I, I just I just never got into it and and Nux was kind of also on that boat. Uh, if I have time, but it's kind of like if I have time, I'll look at Ember and uh, and or actually no Ember. I mean Angular as well. Soon, uh, if not next stream, the stream after. Uh, we'll, I expect some solid content in the next couple of streams. A lot's happened on the solid side, and we've been exploring other frameworks. It's time to come home and uh, kind of bring it all together. I mean, there's a reason we've been exploring. This is all building towards you know the the stuff we've been doing with solid um and uh you, so you can expect some more solid content coming very soon all right yeah thanks for joining us tonight good night can we do a stream together where i show off next plus trpc yeah i mean i saw you do solid with TR, trpc um and i think I think the patterns with Next, like they are fine. I just meant like Next is actually the core thing, like Git server props and all that kind of crap is 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 just is just 
that. I, I, I think I think you can build great apps with next. I just meant like I think the some of the core data loading primitives and all that kind of stuff is all changing. Yeah, yeah. This this is it's like with any other kind of technology. It is interesting though because it's. I, what you have to do you know what, do you know what edge is it's the new jam stack it doesn't really suit everyone but it's gonna like i think it's for like like i'm kind of surprised netlify isn't there yet this is gonna i think this is gonna be their jam you know so to speak like it's just gonna be really easy to just like deploy a function at the edge a cdn get that whole feel and except now instead of the client doing the dynamic parts the edge functions doing the dynamic parts it just fits really nice I, I think I think it's going to take more work for this to actually be the like go to application framework and the thing that scales. I think I think there's more pieces, but it is really cool to have a network of compute so close to you. I feel like we can do something with that. It just it, it's not it's not there yet. Yeah, night. Everyone kind of signing off. We're getting to the four hour point. It's the longest solo stream I think I've done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was good for its time, but like there's a lot of bad patterns around that. Like people, what is it called? Like React pre pass and stuff, where let's render the app once to figure out what the data fetching is and then render it again. Like just, just, I mean, it's fine, but just stuff like that is just not. Like there's a reason the React team's been spending years actually solving these problems and knowing the solutions, I could tell that Next was out of sync with them. But now with uh, Seb there and that, like they're 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 tied to the future. Just like like you see the patterns, Svelte Kit. Next is going to be the is basically the official React <laughs> core team meta framework. It, it does put Remix a little bit at odds as React goes from a library to a framework more, and Next is kind of that framework. So. I think they'll work together, but I, I think if you felt friction about new React features like partial, you know, React server components and streaming from Remix, I think it's just a sense or feel that React's picking favorites, um, you know. Wait, Jeff's like better for me than Edge what? I, I mean, it's kind of the same thing, right? It, like you just view the edge as like a CDN kind of, and then, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure I follow that one. If you do use incentives, then you could just literally just pre render HTML and push it to a CDN. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, there's there's still some latency, right? Like, like I mean, even if not, like you still, it depends on if the data is on demand or not. I don't, I don't know if centralization is a thing. I mean, obviously that's a latency kick, but I mean, like what I'm getting at is if you had Jamstack, you statically rendered most of your page maybe, and then you dynamically loaded some data on top. I'm just saying that dynamic part now maybe is fetched at the worker level so you remove some of that cascading waterfall. So like essentially hit the edge function, return the page, start streaming in that data. So you start fetching on request time instead of waiting for the page to get to the browser, then requesting the JavaScript, then running the JavaScript, then starting the fetch to some data that's far away. It, it, it's just optimizing that kind of like static app shell kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, but I, I, I don't know if they're ready yet too. I think that's a big bet on the future of React too. I think so, I've, I've seen people push up against it, like not like what React's doing and actually like server props. I, you know, I've had even people in like the solid community kind of being like, you should add, get server or whatever, static props or whatever the whole thing is to solid start. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. But like, they really believed in it. So yeah. Right, but I'm saying in Jamstack, it was also fet like all we're doing is like it's the same thing. We're just fetching sooner. 
like you always presumably had some to, like you could have a perfectly static page sure but i'm saying is if if you if you were fetching from a database we just get the fetch from the database sooner like i i don't i i i don't see how it's not a positive to to use the you know the the edge function here cuz like we're just we're just removing a bit of the handshaking and we're just getting the day going sooner. Let's see. There would be no need to cache something like user safe profile there. Yeah, I mean, I guess the edge itself doesn't change that equation. You could have already been doing that somewhere else. It's just the speediness of the initial response, right? To me, as, that's why I, I view it a lot like like Jamstack. Like it's the it's the stuff that's static. You're getting basically the same time, and you're doing the dynamic stuff at the first request. It's just it's it's minor, I suppose, but it's it's like it's still happening sooner. I just came in. What is salt and why is salt better? <laughs> um, oh, God. I, I, I don't know. I, I, any more specific than that. So you didn't need an edge function that can give you there. so slow at the point you have to manage. Okay, so what you're saying is you, you you might as well just do everything. Yeah, I'm I'm mostly concerned on the re initial response to like. Yeah, it depends where the bottle. You saw you saw my streaming examples, right? You can load the HTML. You can start sending the static assets, the CSS, the JavaScript sooner, and. That that's that's mostly what I, I've been I've been I've been getting at, right? Like, if if you can respond sooner and get that in place, it kind of the, the the data fetching is happening anyways. I suppose what you're saying is the handshake from the edge to initiate is that much slower. So, like, we're just pushing the latency back on the data somewhere else. So even if we can load the assets in the browser sooner the database is taking longer for the data to come in yeah i mean i i think streaming is a big part of it well, and yes I'm just gonna let, let you guys play out these comments here. So get to the end of it. Yeah, the the the, the as I, as I m mentioned uh, uh, already. Yeah, uh, I, I I maybe not in this stream. Actually, it was when I was talking to Jason um, on Jason's AMA. Um, the the data fetching part is still obviously. The like the reason everyone's been trying to work on this, but I and I honestly don't know if, if there's a good solve because even with distributed databases and capabilities like this, there's there's still certain industries and certain things where like data privacy, data security are actually going to play in as a as a as a as a big piece of it, you know. And um, I don't even know how distributable some of this stuff is. I, I think basically, at least for now, Edge is kind of like a toy where we get to 
try some stuff and from like a benchmarkers standpoint like someone just kind of playing with like pure mechanics it's very interesting um you can see the potential there but there like any of this new stuff there's there's definitely pieces that are missing um so i don't know uh we could probably go on about this for a while um yeah because i i think i think we've stopped talking about felt like and this stuff like 30 minutes ago so i'm going to end the stream now because this is went on a kind of a funny tangent but thank you all for joining and uh thank you for asking your questions and uh we're gonna the next couple of weeks we should be bringing in some uh some more solid content again so uh uh look forward to it all right thank you all have a good night